has been no hotter Southwest Conference rivalry than the Texas Longhorns and the SMU Mustangs, especially in the 1980s. 1982 was Bobby Collins' first crack at the Longhorns. The game was decided when Lance McElhaney threw this pass that was tipped right into the arms of Bobby Leach. The Miracle Mustangs won it 30 to 17 and went on to an undefeated season. Two years ago, here at Texas Stadium, an underdog SMU team had a chance to nail the unbeaten Longhorns. Trailing 13 to 12 in the fourth quarter, it came down to a two-point conversion. Texas held and won the Southwest Conference Championship. The Longhorn defense held the Mustang offense without a touchdown last year at Memorial Stadium. SMU safety Keith Brooks made it close, though, setting up a dramatic and controversial finish. When Mustang quarterback Don King went after Texas cornerback James Lott three times inside the 10-yard line, was it pass interference? My, I put my hand on him, but I, you know, he did a good act, though, because he failed when I touched him. The referee said no, and Texas had a 13-7 victory that cost SMU a trip to the Cotton Bowl. The 4-1 Longhorns upset Arkansas 15-13 last week in Fayetteville. Thanks to the resurgence of tailback Edwin Simmons, the quarterbacking of sophomore Brett Stafford, who shares the job with senior Todd Dodge. The very good foot of Jeff Ward, who kicked five field goals, including this 55-yarder, and a defense that salted the game away when John Hagee killed the Razorback rally. The Mustangs are three and two. Last week's 37 to 13 win over Houston was a bit more routine as Reggie Dupart padded his league leading rushing totals and scored in his 11th straight game, while the SMU defense snapped a two game losing streak. From Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, it's CFA football, the 1985 matchup between the SMU Mustangs and the Texas Longhorns. This exclusive 21 sports presentation is being brought to you by your Gulf States Toyota dealer. Reach for a star, the 1986 Celica, totally redesigned for more performance and style. Who could ask for anything more? By Republic Bank Corporation, together we can reach new heights. And by Coors Beer, stock up now on the cold, refreshing taste of Coors where you buy beer. Coors to you. Well, hello again, everybody. Bill Coates and Keith Samples here at Texas Stadium. And Keith, if this one holds true to form, we should expect another close one today. Well, I think you can expect it to hold true to form. Generally, Bill, in college football, when you have two very good, evenly matched teams, more often than not, the game will be relatively low scoring, and the game will be turned by a big play or a mistake by one team or the other. You saw on the tees that's been the case in this game for the last three or four or five years. I don't think today will be any exception. Look for the big play early, and that may be the winning team. A lot of Longhorn injuries to talk about that. We'll be back to do that and kick this one off in just a moment. Well, the Longhorns and the Mustangs ready to kick things off here at Texas Stadium. SMU wins the toss, and they have elected to receive Keith, a lot of injuries this afternoon, particularly on defense for the Longhorns, and they'll get a chance to be tested early. Well, and particularly at that linebacking spot with Ty Allard maybe out of the ball game with a strained knee. We're going to get a chance to see talking to the Texas people before the game. They didn't think Allard would play much today, if at all, but I predict he will play. He is a great defensive player, a tough guy, and on a game of this magnitude, I don't think you're going to keep him out of the lineup all day. I think he'll be in there some point during the game, and it wouldn't surprise me to see him play a lot today. Also, you've got Terry Steelhammer, their starting right tackle with a slight collarbone separation. Gerard Senegal, a safety with a sprained ankle, a bruised shoulder for cornerback Eric Jeffries. And yesterday at practice, or Thursday at practice, Tony Tillman and James Lott, a safety and a cornerback. In fact, you heard from James Lott in the open of the show, uh, ran together covering a pass in practice. And uh, one of the sports information people at Texas say both of those guys hit they hit hard, so their status at least somewhat in question today, as well as the Texas tailback, their backup tailback, Edwin Simmons. So we'll develop that for you as we go along. The Mustangs will receive deep for them Andrew Livingston, who almost returned one last week, kicking off Jeff Ward, who had the five field goals last week. This one is underway. It's Livingston at the four. Almost had a seam there before the Longhorns bring him down, and there Bobby Duncan and others is a senior out of Houston down to make the stop. So the Mustangs will set up shop at their own 22-yard line to open things up here in the first quarter at Texas Stadium. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. Don King, the senior quarterback, who had a good ball game and a rushing touchdown last week. 
The backs and receivers familiar, including Reggie Dupart with 184 yards last week. And you see the offensive lineman, although Craig Kennington is starting today in place of Quinstein. Pitch out of the SMU staple to Dupart. That little quick pitch gains eight yards. That, Keith, was something that uh, they didn't get last year because both Atkins and Dupart combined for only 82 yards in the game last year. Well, you're exactly right, but that's going to be a big key in the ballgame today is how well SMU can run the football against the Texas defense. I said in the top of the show that I thought Allen would be in the ballgame. He is starting the ballgame. They tell us that his ankle prohibits him, make that his sprained knee prohibits him from moving laterally very well. On second and three in the backfield, some trouble for Dupart who squirts forward and picks up about two. He looks to be short of the first down. Britt Hager, the sophomore middle linebacker from Odessa Permian there to make the stop. So that'll make it third in about one. And we will set the Texas defense here for you. Along the line, you've got a senior McKinney, Llewellyn out of Fort Worth. Ty Allert is the All-American candidate from Houston. He's a senior. And in that secondary, John Hagee and Richard Peavy, the two safeties, both good ones. Hagee made the two big plays against Arkansas. Out of the power eye, here's a third and short. As you see, Kobe Morrison, Gary Hashaway, and Reggie Dupard going over the top for a first down. First down and more. Keith, this has been a series, and the coaches seem to admit that, both sides, that it's been pretty much muscle the last three or four years. You've got big offensive lines and big defensive lines. Well, as we talked about at the top of the telecast, too, Bill, I think in college football, more so than the professional rank, you really do find that defenses traditionally dominate the big, important games. Uh, you got to have that muscle along the front, and it seems like in college football, if you're going to win the national championship, you got to have a great defense. Ron Morris split out to the top of your screen, Jeffrey Jacobs. At the bottom, Marquise Pleasant nursing some ankle and knee problems today. Fumble by Morrison that is picked up by the Mustangs. They never really had connections there as Kobe Morrison, the sophomore fullback from Dallas Spruce, and Don King really never hooked up there. James McKinney was in on the stop, but it was a lucky bounce for the Mustangs as King falls on. Uh, King did a nice job of keeping his head in the play after he made the handoff and coming back and getting the fumble. That would have been a tremendous break. And again, we talked earlier about turnovers and big plays being a key in the ballgame, and that would have been a very big one early on. Well, they pick up a yard, second down and nine, the scoreboard says, out of the I formation, departed the deep man, but a quick toss. King lobbing it up there, and he overthrows Ron Morris. Coverage by Tony Tillman, who is a 10-2 sprinter in the 100-yard dash, make that the 100-meter dash, and that's quick. So you're not going to blow by him very often. Talking to Whitey Jordan, the offensive coordinator earlier this week for SMU, it's sort of like a chess game. When you get two big teams like that together, you're looking for big plays. The thing that hurt SMU right there, though, Bill, was the first down play where they fumbled. They don't want to get in third and long situations. There's a third and nine end zone shot. King wants to throw, flips it out of the backfield. Dupart had it and dropped it. It was not a lateral, but a forward pass, so no danger of the fumble there. The Texas defense held, and a big ovation from... What is always for this game a big contingent of Longhorn fans? I would say it's close to 50-50 or maybe slightly 51-49. You know, they took 10,000 fans with them to Stanford this year, so they always have a big following. Dodge Carter's first punt of the afternoon will be fielded by the dangerous freshman Eric Metcalf from Arlington, Virginia, who jukes Ken Masterson and gets outside. Well, a lot of running. And he ends up with a decent return, a five-yard return following a 48-yard punt. Daryl Reese there to make the stop. So Texas will set up shop at their own 25. You can see on that brief play why Metcalf is already developing a reputation not only around the Southwest Conference, but around the country as one of the most exciting young players in college football. He's going to have some long punt returns before he's through at Texas. And also, some great receiving numbers for him this year. He's only caught four passes, but two of them have been for touchdowns. Here are the Longhorns. Their quarterback is the sophomore, Brett Stafford. We'll set the offense for you in a moment. Texas starts out out of the high formation. William Harris, the tight end. The deep man is Charles Hunter, but Stafford wants to keep it. Now he's looking to run. He has running room, and he gets near first down yardage. A gain of nine before the Mustangs. Kit Case, their leading tackler, bumps him out of bounds. He's a good runner, averaging almost five yards a carry. Stafford had a good game last week, running for 33 yards and passing for 137 in the win over Arkansas. Brett Stafford, the sophomore quarterback from Belton. Todd Dodge, you may see some this afternoon. Along the backfield, a freshman Darren Norris, a sophomore Charles Hunter, a lot of speed at the wide receivers, and an all-senior and very big offensive front line. 
on second down and one. The Longhorns out of the eye. The deep man is Charles Hunter from Odessa. Hunter very close but may not have it. Reese there to make the stop along with Kit Case. Hunter, the ninth best rusher in the Southwest Conference. He has been alternating quite a bit with Edwin Simmons. Well, I think we're going to have to get a measurement. It looked like he, oh, no, we're not going to measure. He got the first down on his own. Both teams came out and had good yardage on their first first down play of the game. SMU got eight yards on the Reggie Dupard run, and Brett Stafford kept for nine yards for Texas on their first play. Now you start seeing if the defense can tighten up. The time of possession is going to be important for these two teams, Bill. Neither one of them want the other offense to stay on the field for a long, long time at a stretch and wear the defense is down. Interesting to note, Frankie Thomas is in at a safety, and Bradley Pivato in there. Five defensive backs on first down, expecting Texas to throw, but they run it instead to the outside, and Kit Case having none of it as they nail Charles Hunter for a yard loss. Mustangs using the nickelback set that time on first down, which again I find uh, find kind of interesting. Expecting Acres, who has adopted some of the run and shoot principles to his offense this year, but the Longhorns are passing even less. They've thrown 15 less passes this year than they did last year. Second and 11. The wide receivers are Everett Gay to the bottom of your screen. The top Gabriel Johnson. Out of Dallas, South Oak Cliff, the tight end number 95 is Harris, and in motion is Gabriel Johnson. Mustangs come in with a blitz. Quick pitch to Hunter again, and Kit Case is there to make his third tackle of the afternoon. Well, linebackers on both these teams are involved in a lot of tackles. They set up the defense so that the linebackers are the ones that have to make the tackles. And here you see Kit Case does a nice job of reading the pitch play, breaking through the line of scrimmage. And you can see by his statistics there, Kit Case has had a very fine year for the SMU Mustangs. So Bradley Pivato, is he in there? No, I don't see him. Uh, the Mustangs have four defensive backs in the game and three linebackers. And their fake blitz, but instead drop five man deep, and there is a pass to Gay, who catches into Texas, like that into SMU territory. Cornelius Dozier and Jerry Ball putting some heavy pressure, but a 23 yard completion to Everett Gay, a junior from Houston, his ninth catch of the year. So you see it on replay, this is a nice throw and catch. Stafford held onto the ball a long time, and pretty good zone coverage by the SMU secondary. They had to play pretty well covered up, but he found a little crease in the zone, and Stafford got him the football, and that is a big, big third down conversion at Texas. Not a particularly good third down team so far this year. Longhorns averaging 168 of their 360 yards of total offense through the air. Draw play, first time we've seen Jerome Johnson, a senior from Pilot Point, who's had injury problems. Johnson out of the draw gets yardage. Wade Johnson brings him down. Jerome played a lot last year but was injured when he broke a hand following the Auburn game and then had his knee injured in the spring. And Darren Norris, the freshman, has taken over, but we see a nice run from him. A little delay gets the draw play going, and Jerome Johnson bangs it up inside for five yards, and we get a second and five. Okay, second and five from the SMU 40. Gabriel Johnson and Donovan Pitts, a speedster, into the formation. Here's an option with a lot of running room for Brett Stafford. Oh, he really does a nice job that time of reading the Mustang option coverage before Frankie Thomas brings him down, not before a his first down at the 29 yard line. So this Texas drive impressive. Well, you can see Stafford is a big part of their running game as you mentioned a while ago. He does a nice job of running the option and there he made the fake. He wanted to run that ball all the way. After he made the fake to the fullback he turned it right up field and gets the first down. A good drive by the Longhorns. High school track and field champion Brett Stafford. A lot of speed. One of the fastest quarterbacks you'll find in the conference. On first down Stafford appears to be wanting to throw. That's Monty going giving chase. And Stafford going across the way for Gabriel Johnson, who is a junior from Dallas South of Cliff. He'll be matched up again this afternoon against uh, Rod Jones, one of his old high school teammates from South Oak Cliff, who wears number one for the Mustangs. Second and ten with nine minutes to go in a scoreless first quarter. Mustangs and the Texas Longhorns. Keith Samples and Bill Coates, we're awfully glad to have you with us for this broadcast of what shapes up to be an important Southwest Conference game. The Longhorns are 2-0 after their win over Arkansas. And feeling that this obviously is one of their toughest road games of the year. And if they can pull this one off, 
Carson in good shape. The Mustangs, the favorite here this afternoon with a three and two record. Pitch out and the ball on the carpet, but Johnson picks it up. Jerome Johnson got a lucky bounce as he got a lot of pressure from Ron Jones, number one, and number 44, Kit Case. So a third down and 14 upcoming. Well, so the good bounces are even at one apiece. The SMU Mustangs had a fumble bounce their way on their first possession, and now the Longhorns have a bounce that goes their way here. You see he just loses the handle on the pitch, and the ball did come right back up just before Rod Jones arrived on the scene to make the stop for the loss. Longhorns have gotten a lot of lucky bounces this year. They have fumbled it now 14 times, but lost it only six times. So the ball has popped up their way quite often. I don't know if SMU has them where they want them or not. The last time we had a third and long, you know what happened, a 23-yard completion. Here's Dodge looking to make that Stafford looking to throw again. He goes for the six-yard line out of bounds as he tries to hit. Charles Hunter coming out of the backfield. Coverage over there by Monty Goin. So that's one-on-one -on -one with a running back and a linebacker in Goin. He doesn't have the great speed, does a good job. Boy, he had him covered nice, though. I believe we're going to be able to see on a replay that he was out of bounds. Stafford does a nice job just getting rid of the football. A lot of pressure. No doubt about it. You can see he, he makes the catch from a posterior position, but he's out of bounds when he makes the catch. Here's a 50-yard field goal try from Jeff Ward, the junior from Austin. His father, a former Southwest Conference and NFL referee, the coach's son, Danny Akers, holding. No good. Off to the right. As Jeff Ward, who you've come to expect to kick these long field goals after the performance he put on last week, with five field goals in the game, including the 55-yarder and a 49-yarder, misfires here. And with 8-10 to go in the first quarter, it's scoreless SMU against Texas. Keith, that Texas drive started at the 25. The 50-yard field goal's no good, and you and I were talking. It's been a while since the Longhorns have scored a touchdown offensively. Well, it's been two complete football games since the Longhorn, off Longhorn offense has been in the end zone. They didn't score a touchdown against Oklahoma on offense, and last week against Arkansas, five field goals. King with a pitch on first down. Jeff Atkins in the game. He has some running room and advances the ball maybe three yards into the secondary or into the Texas backfield, Brent Hager and others, but Stephen Braggs makes the stop for the Longhorns, but they did a nice job of forcing Atkins to change his route there. Well, you can see this is the same play they ran on the first down a while ago, only the, on the first position, only with Atkins instead of Dupart. Mustang offensive line with a familiar look to it. Number 69, Craig Kennington at left tackle, who had missed a couple of ball games with a bruised shoulder. Atkins will try it up the middle on second down, and not much there. Ty Allert, who is a big question mark coming into the game, is playing, and he makes the stop on second down. Set up a third and five. Well, his knee was hurt, but you saw right there his shoulder's not hurting as he planted that shoulder right into Atkins and made the tackle. He's been in every place so far, so as, as I thought prior to the game, you don't let a game like this go by without your best players in there, and Ty Allen's playing with a little pain today. Longhorns have never lost here at Texas Stadium. They won here in 79, again in 81, and again in 83, so they have three of the only nine losses that SMU has suffered in this stadium. Third and five, King wants to throw. That's McKinney with the rush, McKinney with the sack, the ball loose, and Steve Llewellyn recovers it for the Longhorns. Number 93, a sophomore from Fort Worth's Eastern Hills, a high school teammate of Jeff Atkins of the Mustangs, is there to recover the fumble after the hit by James McKinney. Well, you're going to see the replay. King wants to go back and pass. He's getting a lot of pressure from the outside. And as he's falling to the turf, the ball pops free. And Steve Llewellyn's there to make the recovery. And we talked about how important big plays and turnovers would be. And the Longhorns get the first really big break of the game with 6.49 to play in the first quarter. McKinney's fifth sack of the season. The Longhorns always have an outstanding pass rush. So with a first and 10 at the SMU 28, the backfield, Charles Hunter and Darren Norris make that Jerome Johnson, but Stafford flushed out of the pocket, wants to throw, has Johnson, but he can't hold on to it at the 15. No fall to the quarterbacks, a little bit high, but uh, Johnson should have had that catch. Both teams doing a good job getting pressure on the passer here in the early going there. Stafford has to flush out of the pocket. And oh, within inches of a big first down play. 
setting up a second and ten for the Longhorns who send Everett Gay wide to the top of your screen at the bottom. Here's Johnson again, the tight end Harris. Mustangs with three linemen, four linebackers, four deep secondary. Hunter on the pitch and Hunter advancing for two, maybe three yards is Keith Brooks who picked off the pass and returned it for a touchdown last year for SMU's only score runs him out of bounds. The Mustangs defense is stiffening up here. They had to come onto the field deep in the SMU end of the field at the 27 yard line only getting up two yards in the first two plays and an offense that Texas thought was going to be one of its most productive in several years at the beginning of the season has slowed down as we said in terms of getting it into the end zone. And Jeff Ward has been their scoring punch for a couple of games now. 636 to go in the first period no score third and eight TD Briggs coming on the blitz so is Kit Case and here's Stafford running for his life. Up in the air Harris has it but he's out of bounds. Remember in college football you only have to get one foot down and hopefully we'll be able to make some judgment here I on the replay. Bill Watson from uh, our angle the first time live it looked like he was definitely out of bounds and he wasn't able to, to get a foot down. And here you see again the, pr the passers under big pressure. He just gets it away. I don't believe he had possession of the ball before he came down. Yeah, it looked like his foot touched that white stripe across the way, which is out of bounds. Here's a 41 yard, make that a 42 yard try from Jeff Ward. And this one is good, and the Longhorns take the lead with 6.25 to go in the first quarter. Jeff Ward field goal, and the Longhorns draw first blood here at Texas Stadium. They lead SMU 3 0. 3 0 our score here. As the Longhorns prepare to kick off after a 42 yard Jeff Ward field goal. Ward kicking away to Andrew Livingston. Five yards deep and will not run it out. So after the sack of Don King by James McKinney, recovered by Steve Llewellyn, Longhorns fail to get the first down, but they do get a 42 yard field goal from Jeff Ward and lead 3 0 with 6.25 to play here in the first quarter. Bill, you mentioned a little while ago that uh, Texas had not lost in Texas Stadium as you see the scoring drive, 24 seconds. That's a pretty short drive. I don't I don't believe that Texas has lost in Dallas to SMU since 1965 when the game was played in the Cotton Bowl. It's been a long time since the Longhorns have had a, a bad trip home from Dallas. But the Mustangs have won two of the last three in Austin. It's been a crazy series. And not much doing for DuPart. I'll tell you, it's awfully tough to try the middle of that Texas defense, but the Mustangs are convinced that they at least have to try to outmuscle them a little bit and establish something up the middle. They failed to do that last year with any sort of success, and it cost him the ball game. Steve Llewellyn made the tackle. Well, they started at the 20, so give them, what, a half a yard, Keith? Not much. That's liberally maybe a half a yard. <laughs> they send Jeff Jacobs. Of your screen Jacobs got the cast off his arm after the broken wrist he got it off earlier this week and DuPart may be back to the line of scrimmage Mustangs with that quick pitch James McKinney and Stephen Braggs coming up from the left side to make the tackle you're talking about Reggie DuPart one of the leading rushers in the nation far out in front in Southwest Conference rushing totals with almost 700 yards averaging 135 yards a game Atkins is second averaging only 88 a ball game and the Longhorns just stymieing him for nothing and setting up a third and nine. Now keeping in mind, you're talking about the top rushing offense in the Southwest Conference as well, with the Mustangs averaging 274 plus yards per game. Longhorns play four deep in the secondary, all man to man. Dupart out of the draw will still be short of the first down as Texas, as they so often do, Keith. Play the four deep secondary, all man to man. You've got the four linemen and the three linebackers, as you can see in the replay, all mindful of the run. So it's very hard to break the big gainer on this defense. Actually, against the Texas defense, Depart makes a pretty nice run there. Unfortunately, it's on third and nine that his six yard run comes. <laughs> <laughs> Needed nine, got six. Not enough by anybody's mathematics. Here's Dodge Carter out of Highland Park with a nice punt. Driving here at Metcalf back to the 15. He's dangerous. Look at him go, Eric Metcalf. Only a freshman, the son of Terry Metcalf, the former National Football League star with the St. Louis Cardinals, and he's got a lot of his old man's moves. I'm going to tell you right there is a living, breathing example that genetics do play a part in what you are. This guy looks like his father out there. What a great run by little Metcalf. This guy is 
an exciting football player, and he does most of it on his own. It looks like they had him pinned up for almost nothing on the punt return, and he jukes by a couple of people, breaks it out. A 56-yard punt, 36-yard return. Texas with good field position again inside SMU territory at the 49. Here's our first look at Edwin Simmons playing on a pulled hamstring, and Simmons gets nine yards. I probably need to be careful how I say this, but <laughs> Simmons and Howler, neither one looked as badly injured as I was told that they might be. Are you insinuating that maybe it, uh, the Longhorns were building up those injuries a little bit more than, than perhaps well, they really are? you know, maybe things like that happen. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you, emotion will play at least a part in a game like this. The kid can, all of a sudden, those injuries don't, uh, don't feel so badly when you're playing one of your arch rivals. So on second and two, this is Simmons again. That Jerome Johnson and Johnson will be awfully close to a first down and will have it. Cornelius Dozier makes the stop. You've got 33 Edwin Simmons and 35 Jerome Johnson. Both of them big guys. I was just going to say, we have those two guys in the backfield together. One of them at 219 is the small back in the backfield. <laughs> Simmons at 234. And, jo and Johnson at 219 is the fullback. He's yes. the designated fullback. Yeah, they're hard to tell apart. They really are. You've got 35 and 33, so bear with me <laughs> as you find both of them still in there. On first and 10, Texas with Russell Hayes, a senior from San Antonio, and Donovan Pitts at the bottom of your screen. Stafford, play action, wants it all. But overthrows SMU cornerback Mark Vinson. He was trying to hit Donovan Pitts, who caught a 96-yard touchdown pass from Todd Dodge in the win over Rice, the longest completion in the conference this year. Boy, when he released that ball, I thought Vinson had the interception. It looked like he was throwing to Mark Vinson down there. It would have been a great reception by Vinson if he'd been able to come up with it. Second down and 10. Well, it was Stafford's fault, not Vincent's. He overthrew him. Yeah. By a, by a <laughs> Vincent said, I ran the right route. Yeah. Give you me the go, ball. You should go back into the Texas huddle. Try that one more time. Second and 10. Longhorns, who have the good foot of board to depend on, would like to get seven here. Out of the play action, they come right back to Metcalf with a wall in front of him. And Terry, I want to say Terry Metcalf, Eric Metcalf, gets first down yardage. Bill, they set that play up so nice. They've been running Stafford, rolling out to the right passing, and it, they didn't even realize that it was a screen pass until they already had the wall set up. And really, if he would have cut inside, he might have done better. Look at the blockers that are inside for him. He cuts it to the sideline and still gets the first down. 13-yard reception, fifth catch of the year for Metcalf has two touchdowns and has averaged 45 yards a catch. 3-12 to go in the first period with, with Texas leading 3-0 and driving. Metcalf on the pitch and he has five more yards. Quick hitter as T.D. Briggs and Daryl Reese bring him down. I see Cornelius Dozier, Monty Goen, T.D. Briggs, and Kit Case, the SMU linebackers. Their big 300-pound defensive end, Joe Phillips, who wears number 91 in there, along with John Eichsman, number 65. You'll see Jerry Ball in at nose guard just about all afternoon. The defensive backs, sophomore Frankie Thomas. We expect to see the senior Tim Green before the afternoon's over. Daryl Reese, number four. Mark Vinson, number 15. And Rod Jones, number one. Second down play. This is just power football to the outside as Simmons. Not much there. Frankie Thomas, who wears number 29, finished off a tackle by T.D. Briggs and Daryl Reese, number four. So third and six for the Mustangs. Talk about a contrast in running backs with Eric Metcalf at 5'9", 178 pounds in there for the Longhorns at times. And then they come in with Edwin Simmons at 234 pounds. Wow. Both of them have good speed, though. Simmons can run if his knee is okay. Stafford, two of seven through the air. It's third and six Texas with Russell Hayes splitting out to the top of your screen. Donovan Pitts, the bottom. Pitts has all the speed, and Stafford looking his way, but he's under some pressure. This is Kit Case flushing him out. Stafford will run the first down and be rather close. I think he's going to be short. They needed to gain the 14-yard line. Stafford's third carry for 25 yards. Cornelius Dozier was there to bring him down. What you've got now is a fourth and short. And you hear the Texas crowd hollering, go for it in the background. And I don't see Ward yet. Do you I, see Jeff? Nope. No, I think uh, Fred Akers maybe heard the crowd say, let's go for it. Well, the Longhorns only one of four. 
on third down conversions. Here's their first fourth down try of the afternoon. I'm surprised. I really am you surprised. Look, you look at Fred Akers, fourth down and one. They need to gain the nine. This is Anthony Byerly who has stopped what appears to be short of it as he tries to go over the top. And the Mustangs say he did not get it. When he first left the ground, it looked like he might make it, but I don't believe he did. Somebody made a good tackle on the inside, pushed him back, and he is not going to have the first down. We're going to bring on the chain to officially look at it. Oh, right there. Nice hit. Can't see who made the stop. It looked like a defensive back came up and put his shoulder in there to stop the forward progress. As you can see, the Mustangs did hold. That may come back to haunt the Longhorns. They had a sure three points with Jeff Ward coming in to kick the field goal. They turned it down and gambled. And the numbers came up wrong. So with a minute seven to go here in the first quarter, Texas still leading SMU 3-0. Texas has had the ball far more, far more often here in the first quarter, having 77 total yards to 15 for the Mustangs. But tack on some more to that as Gary Hashaway gets what appears to be first down yardage from about the 15 out to the 25, maybe the 26-yard line. There is a first down as James Lott brought him down. Well, Bill, I think you hit on a key point right there. The Mustangs need to get three or four or five first downs in succession here and keep their defense off of the field. The Mustang defensive unit's been out there a lot in the first quarter. And the first team, SMU offensive line in there. Hashaway, the fullback, will try the middle. Right tackle this time, Roy Dunn, for 75 on the ground. The blockers in front of him, David Richards. So a three-yard gain, Blake Brawner, who hails from the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and a senior out of Richardson Berkner High School, and a fine defensive lineman there to make the stop as Ron Morris leaves. Nashaway, the fifth-year senior who played his high school football at Pittsburgh, Texas, on a state championship team. Winding down the first quarter, this will probably be the last play of the quarter, except for the flag. As someone jumped off sides, initial contact appeared to be from the Texas defensive line, but were they drawn off sides? This will be the first penalty of the afternoon so far. Yeah, you're going to see on the, on the replay, I think at the top of the screen, number 69. Ah, there you got the movement by the SMU left tackle. Craig Kennington. And Kennington slaps his helmet. That's a tough situation when you're playing against a very good defense to go from second and seven to second and 12. Changes your outlook. Dead ball, false start, offense, second down. Don King 0 for 2 passing so far. And he faces a second down and 12, a possible passing situation here. His tight end is Albert Reese. But Jeff Atkins will carry. A lot of running room, big yardage for Atkins all the way out to the 47. That's a good call by the offensive coaches for SMU, too. They set that up in an obvious passing situation. Got the flow away. And look, came back with a counter draw to Atkins. He does a nice job reading the blocks. Good offensive call. Had the defense going one way, come back with a counter draw the other way, and they pick up the big yard. He's 22 yards on the carry. That Alpha Volant, number 84, if you saw at the bottom of your screen, was the guy who took the outside pass rush, opening the way for the 22-yard Jeff Atkins run out of the draw. Atkins already with four carries for 38 yards. Ricard not as effective this afternoon so far with only 20 yards. Reggie's in there. This is the... Best SMU drive of the day so far. King wants it all. He's looking for Morris, but goes the wrong way. Morris breaks one way. King's pass goes the other. Tony Tillman, the junior from Borger, there on coverage. Last week, if you'll remember, Morris was wide open on a pass play down at the Astrodome as we end the first quarter here at Texas Stadium. And it's Texas leading SMU 3-0. Second quarter here at Texas Stadium. Longhorns holding a 3-0 lead. A stat the uh, Mustangs like to point to with pride, the fact that Atkins and DuPart have each gained 100 yards or more in five of the last seven games. But the Texas defense has not given up two 100-yard days since the 1971 Oklahoma game Whoa. 14 years ago. 
that's pretty consistent. Very consistent. Oklahoma almost did it a couple of years ago, but fell four yards shy. As the Mustangs open the second quarter with a running play to Reggie Dupart, that gains four yards and will set up a third down and six. They go long on first down and get short yardage on second down. Look at the first period statistics. There you see SMU with 51 total yards in the first quarter. They come into the ball game as the conference's leading offensive team with 434 yards per game total offense. So the Longhorn defense doing the job in the first quarter. From a confidence standpoint, a big third down play here for the Mustangs who haven't done much so far as they drill it and complete it to Albert Reese, the junior tight end from Temple. Nice pass, James Lott covering, but King just flat dropped back seven and fired that one to a very big target. Well, and Reese really made a nice catch of the ball. He was pretty well covered, as you said there. Hang it, hung onto the football for his 12th reception, and, and that's a big third down play. You said it right. They need for the offense to do something. The second quarter this year has been Texas's quarter, Bill, all year long. Only their third first down of the afternoon. Texas has four, and King is now one of four. It's his first completion of the afternoon. Draw play. Getting nothing. And subtract a yard as Dupart is stopped by Brian Espinoza. And James McKinney. Was McKinney the one who got his arm in the backfield? McKinney was the one who darted through to make the stop. Here you see the replay. Looks like if he gets by McKinney, he's got a chance to pick up four or five, six yards, but McKinney gets that big old arm up and makes the tackle. He was a high school tight end recruited heavily by, among others, the Longhorns and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Texas won out, and McKinney has been an excellent player. Second down and 10, just underway in the second quarter. Longhorns with a 3 0 lead. Atkins weaving his way through the defenders before Mike January, a former high school running back, brings him down. All Atkins there as he does a nice piece of work weaving his way through the uh, contain men. Well, early on in this ballgame, Atkins has been the horse for SMU rather than Depart. As you said earlier, that uh, Depart has, has really had uh, much better statistics for the year, but right now Atkins five carries for 43 yards, Depart eight carries for 22 yards. 184 for Reggie last week against Houston, 112 for Atkins. Both of them past career milestones. Lobbing it up, they're going after Morris, but King overthrows him again. Nice coverage by Tony Griffin. Again, the Longhorns, to set up a fourth down, the Longhorns play almost exclusively man-to-man -man defensive coverage in their secondary, and that's very rare in college football. You have to have great athletes to do it, and Keith, traditionally, the Longhorns have been able to recruit the great athletes. Well, they recruit good athletes, and they put a, like what they do at Texas, as you see the punt, they put a lot of very good athletes back there, guys who maybe didn't necessarily play in the secondary in high school. Now, Griffin was a high school running back time quarterback played in the secondary as you see Carter's punt come awfully close to going into the corner but he just tacked it into the end zone and Texas will take over at the 20 so the Longhorn defense which is really came of age in the Oklahoma game even though they lost their only touchdown in the Oklahoma game and a 14 to 7 loss was by Kip Cooper a defensive end as you take a look at the Longhorn bench number 12 with his back to you is Danny Akers the son of Fred Akers the second winningest active coach in the conference percentage wise behind the guy on the other side of the field that you're looking at now Bobby Collins first down and 10 with just under 13 to go fumble is Dupard make that Simmons lets it get on the ground and Dupard will get a chance as the Mustangs recover the fumble. Reggie Dupart will get his chance for the Mustangs thanks to Keith Brooks who picks it up for the Mustangs after the Edwin Simmons fumble and again it appeared that Stafford and the big tailback never had any kind of a connection there. Well just a mishandling of the football. They, Simmons doesn't get hit you can see on the replay they just never got it together and Simmons drops the ball and boom big break. It's very, very critical from the Mustangs' point of view to punch it in here now. Texas got some points out of their big break early in the ballgame on the SMU fumble. Now it's SMU's turn to reciprocate. So circle that play as Jacobs and Morris, the two wideouts, Dupart going over the top, and again the Longhorns break through. They get penetration along the line as Steve Llewellyn gets his big hand up there, big arm, to trip Dupart up as he goes airborne for maybe two yards. got a smart when you got a guy stick his knee right into your face like a car did. Llewellyn's a big youngster, 270 pounds. And Steelhammer continuing a tradition of excellent defensive tackle play for the Longhorns, and that was a question mark when the season started. On second down, here's Dupart. 
again testing their middle, this time a little more room to operate as Richard Peavy comes up from his safety spot, a junior from Houston who's had a lot of knee injuries, a lot of problems injury-wise, playing well this year. Bill, it's Halloween week, so strange things happen. And you remember in the first quarter, Texas recovered the SMU fumble at the 27-yard line. SMU recovers the Texas fumble at the 27-yard line. Hey, hey, got to be an omen. That's right. Something's <laughs> going on out there. Uh, let's see what happens here on third down and four. As they give it this time, for first down yardage to Reggie Dupar, who is starting to have some success against the Texas defense. First down's now tied at four each, and Dupar with 33 yards on 11 carries. So. The trap play where they pulled the guard and the tackle from the offside to lead the blocking. They got a little crack there in the defensive wall, and Dupar gets the first down. Elmer Thomas, a redshirt freshman from Dallas Carter in there, along with junior David Adamson, number 27. Here's another draw. Dupar, for what, third or fourth straight time, getting yardage for the Mustangs as he advances it down toward the 12-yard line. Blake Brauner brings it down. Pretty much the same play. They pull the offside tackle and guard again around to get the blocks. And now Dupart will get a rest, and Jeff Atkins will come in. The senior sits down, the younger man, the junior comes into the ball game as King brings in Tony Sheldman playing a tight end as Reese gets a rest. Number 48, Sheldman blocking for Kobe Morrison, who has yardage down to the snow nine, maybe the eight yard line. They need to gain the six, so that'll set up a third down and two, maybe three yards. So here's SMU knocking at the door as the sophomore Kobe Morrison is brought down by Chalmer Adams, and now SMU trying to one-up Texas after the turnover. Longhorn's got a field goal. Mustangs trying to get a touchdown out of this. Let's keep in mind, too, that Texas was down close earlier. They elected not to go for the field goal on fourth and one, went for the first down and didn't make it. Well, that'll bring the crowd to the feet. It's a good one here at Texas Stadium, numbering around 60,000, third and three, need to gain the six-yard line. King wants to keep it himself. He'll get in easily. Don King from eight yards out, and the Mustangs break out on top. yard six play drive that results in the eight yard King touchdown run only a second running score of the year and Brownlee misfires on the extra point missed it wide right a 27 yard six play drive with Don King going the final eight on an excellent option run Keith yeah, it really was well executed play the hole just opened up for him all of a sudden there you see it six plays 27 yards and they get King with a nine-yard run. We called it an eight-yard run. Let's compromise. Said he went eight and a half yards for the touchdown. <laughs> Either way, a nice play, well executed. Good drive for the Mustangs. Of course, Texas scored their field goal off a of SMU fumble. And the Mustangs come back and recover an Edwin Simmons fumble and one up the Longhorns with a touchdown drive. This one bounding to the one-yard line. That's Eric Metcalf. Not much working for Metcalf as Mark Benson and Daryl Terrell are there to bring him down. So field position does not become the ally here of the Longhorns, who will have to start 83 yards away from their end zone, trailing 7-3 with 9.43 to play in the second quarter. Bill, hindsight's 20-20, but that mixed ex missed extra point by the Mustangs make the, makes the decision not to go for the field goal, even a bigger one. And they've gone ahead and taken the Jeff Ward field goal earlier in the ball. We have a 6-6 tie right now. I didn't see. I think he just missed the extra point. There was no inordinate amount of pressure applied there. Snap appeared to be good. He just missed it wide right. Stafford's still the quarterback. And the Mustangs still laying in wait for him. That is number 70, a freshman, Robert McDade. 
Corsicana, the only SMU freshman who has played this year, the only true freshman out of last year's recruiting class to play. And he is going to be a good one. They were looking for somebody to back up Jerry Ball to be the heir apparent, and they think, think they found him in Robert McDade. So that sets up a second and nine with a clock moving toward the nine-minute mark here in the second quarter of a 6-3 game at Texas Stadium with SMU leading the Longhorns, who have the football in motion. That is Gabriel Johnson out of the I formation. Simmons lets that ball pop up, but he manages to corner it and gain maybe two yards. You know, Bill, I, Bill, I thought it was interesting that they put Simmons back into the game on the next possession after he had trouble hanging on to the ball there on the fumble. And here you see on the replay, you're right. He has a little bit of trouble getting a handle on it right there. Finally tucks it away and gets a couple of yards. But he's he is having trouble holding on to the football. Now, he never had a good grip on the fumble a moment ago and almost lost that. One. So here's the third and five as the Longhorns need to gain the 27. A four man make that a three man rush coming from the Mustangs. But they apply good pressure and a screen over the middle to William Harris. I'm going to call that a screen even though it's to the tight end who just drifted back and was able to become the safety valve for what looks like a first down. Yeah, they were setting up the screen, no doubt about it. A middle screen to the tight end. Stafford does a good job hanging onto the football and giving it time to set up. Actually, I couldn't really see on the replay. It looked like maybe the running back fell down there and they were trying to get the screen to the back out of the backfield and he just went to Harris the tight end at the last second. Well, William Harris, a junior, one of the best tight ends in the conference, smart enough to get himself into position to make the catch and does. First down for the Longhorns, their fifth of the afternoon. And here's Charles Hunter back into the ball game, a sophomore from Odessa, who had 271 yards coming into the ball game today. Five carries for only four yards to show for his afternoon's work thus far. Ben Hummel, the junior out of Rockwall, make that the sophomore from Rockwall up to make the stop after a three yard gain, second and seven. A familiar stat with the Longhorns, second in the conference in rushing defense. Well, that's a particularly good stat to note since the SMU Mustangs are first in the conference in rushing offense. Stafford scrambling. Joe Phillips brings him down after a short game. Stafford has that remarkable ability to continue to gain plus yardage. Even when he's in trouble, he always seems to get back to the line of scrimmage. That time he's obviously looking for somebody to throw to, but decides to tuck it and just get what he can. As you see, 300-pound Joe Phillips, who is a load. Well, Stafford's a fine athlete. He's got a lot of natural ability. And as you say, he's the kind of guy who can turn a bad play into a plus yardage play simply on his athletic ability. His father, a high school coach in Belgium in Central Texas, third and six. And a straight drop back here for Stafford, who's looking to fire it to Hunter. He has Hunter, who bounces off the tackler and looks to have the first down. First man to hit him was Rod Jones. He and Kit Case combined to drive him out of bounds, but Hunter was just a little bit meaner on that play. I'm checking the reading now. That's a 4.2 on the Richter scale, the collision that occurred there. Hunter is another one of those big running backs for the Longhorns. He weighs 210 pounds, and watch what happens here. Boy, Hunter and Jones collide right about the 40-yard line. Ooh. Jones really put the hit on him, but Hunter bounced back and got the first down. Rod Jones weighs 160, so about a 50-pound weight difference there. So I guess you can normally assume that the bigger guy is going to win out, and that's what happened to first down Longhorns. Wow. It's got to be discouraging for Rod Jones. He takes a good shot and doesn't get much out of it. He's probably seeing 22 Longhorns on offense right now. Two 11-man teams. That had to hurt a little bit. Here's a draw. Here's Hunter coming at you again. And Ben Hummel contains him, but not before. A nice pickup by the sophomore from Odessa, who's starting to pay dividends now. Second down and three, 620 to go in the second period. Fumbles, turnovers, as they so often do, have led to the points for both squads. Fumble by the Mustangs set up a 42-yard Texas field goal, a fumble by Texas, set up a nine-yard Don King run. Extra point, no good. 6-3 Mustangs here in the second quarter. Texas has the ball. Stafford and Hunter again. Third straight time they've gone to Hunter. Two runs and a pass. Somebody's helmet flies out of there. Paul Jaton, the offensive lineman. Very 
close to a first down as Joe Phillips comes up with a stop. I think he's got the first down. See, boy, Hunter's a guy who can take a shot and bounce right back. He took a good hit right then and came out of there and got the extra yard for the first down. They have excellent speed. Darren Norris, their freshman fullback, is one of the one of the top ten high school 100 meter dash men last year. Hunter with good speed. Simmons, before his knee injury, had excellent speed. He was a high school track and field champion in class 3A. Here's another Longhorn first down as Texas tries to grind it out here inside SMU territory at the 48. And Stafford will take his time on this one. Not much working. Well, take that back. It looked like Hunter was going to be trapped in the backfield, but he spins and falls forward for seven more. This is a big league move by Hunter. Look at him head up into the line, and as you say, there's no hole there. He's cut off by the defense. Whoa, he's gone. A 180 degree spin, he comes around and goes right out. Now, Daryl Reese, who is a sure tackler, a senior from Garland, or was that a 360 degree spin? Degree of difficulty, 2.8. He made a full turn. Absolutely. A ballet pirouette. Here's Norris, the freshman fullback, who is a quick youngster. I believe it's going to be his first carry of the afternoon, and that'll be a Texas first down. First carry of the day for Darren Norris, who wears number 34. T.D. Briggs brought him down, and for Texas, their seventh first down to five for SMU. And the Longhorns content to keep it on the ground, but they'll surprise you with a pass play every now and again, and you might look for that with 31 Gabriel Johnson in the game, and Harris is a stand-up tight end. This is quarterback draw. I'm not sure whether it was a busted play or a designed draw by Brett Stafford, but he picks up two yards. I think he had trouble getting the snap from center. Let's look on the replay and see. Oh, I tell you, he saw the, the penetration into the backfield. That's Kit Case. Kit Case got the good penetration, and Stafford saw that the play was uh, going to be totally destroyed by that penetration, and he just tucked it up inside and said, I'm going to get what I can, and he got a yard. What has been a quick first half is starting to wind down toward the four-minute mark, second and nine. And in motion, Harris, who plants himself to the bottom of your screen. Gabriel Johnson wears number 31. Here's a pitch. Great crackback block by Everett Gay. And Hunter is near first down yardage. Number 19. If we can see a replay of that one, you'll see number 19, Everett Gay, with a crackback block that just crunches an SMU linebacker. See if you can see it on the right-hand side of your screen. This is one of the few times I've ever heard a crowd in a stadium react to a block like the crowd reacted here. You yeah. couldn't see it there, but you're right. He really laid a block on And it was such a powerful block and so visible that you heard the stands go, oh. That was a great block. Third and one, Everett Gay, take my word for it. Number 19, Everett Gay, deserves all the credit in the world for that one. But here's a third down. The Mustangs have four linemen. The four linebackers will stack it up to try to stop the third and short, and it appears they have done that. The handoff, the hunter again, Hummel, Brooks, Case, Briggs, and a bunch of blue shirts there to stop him short of the first down. Well, the Longhorns tried a fourth and short a while ago and misfired, but Fred Akers try it again. They're sending Danny Akers, number 12, out there. Akers is the holder on field goals, and here comes Jeff Ward, number 23. So the Longhorns will be content to allow Jeff Ward to tie this football game up. And again, the missed extra point may be playing a part in the strategy. They well, kick the field goal and they tie the game. Well, I think, though, too, as much as anything, oh, we're going to get a timeout and they're going to talk about it maybe. From the looks of Jeff Ward, it appears that maybe the Longhorns were a bit confused, perhaps didn't have enough men on the field. Whatever. They will try a field goal when we return in a moment. Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, Channel 21 gives you the best of both worlds, football and the movies. Charlton Heston is an aging quarterback fighting for one more winning season. He's number one Tuesday night on KTXA television. I remember when they were making that movie. I watched a cowboy game one afternoon in New Orleans, and they were filming Charlton Heston in number one. Well, the reason they called the timeout there before the commercial break, Bill, is they only had three seconds left on the... Uh playing clock to get the playoffs, so they had to call timeout to get the field goal unit set up. Here's a 43-yard field goal attempt by Ward. He missed a 50 earlier and converts here to tie the game. Jeff Ward 
Bernard, Mr. Offense, if you talk to Texas fans, has kicked two out of three this afternoon. He missed a 50, hit a 42, and with 235 to go in the second period, it's a 43-yard field goal, and our score now is 6-6. Well, again, I'm going to preface this remark by saying hindsight's 20-20, but you wonder if there are any second thoughts on that Texas sideline about passing up the Jeff Ward field goal earlier. Wednesday, November 6th, is a special movie night on Channel 1. At 7 o'clock, Humphrey Bogart stars in Casablanca. Then at 9 o'clock, we play it again with Bogart as Sam Spade in the Maltese Falcon. been handed a note. Dave, am I to take that that the 713 is time of possession in favor of one of the ball clubs and I would assume that it would be in favor of perhaps the uh, Texas Longhorns. Now there you see the 713 scoring drive. Now we've clarified the mystery. 14 plays, 56 yards, 7 minutes and 13 seconds. That is a long drive. Definitely. And soon consumes half a quarter. And the Longhorns love to do that. My mistake. Seven minutes and 13 seconds on the scoring drive. Game tied at six. This is Terrell Terrell fielding the ball and bringing it back out to the 21. The junior from W.T. White High School. We've got a sophomore. Terrell Terrell, a sophomore from W.T. White in the Dallas area, returning the kickoff to the 21 as Keith leaves us and goes down to the field. He'll have halftime bits planned with both coaches, including. SMU's Bobby Collins. Two and a half minutes to go here in the first half at Texas Stadium. This one is tied 6-6. And if recent history means anything, these two teams will play another close one this afternoon. King pitching to Jeff Atkins. As up from his linebacker spot, Mark Petkovich along with James McKinney and Thomas Aldridge there to make the stop. Aldridge wearing number 97. Maybe a two-yard game for Mr. Atkins who has been the workhorse as far as yardage goes this afternoon with 46 yards, but with only half the carries of Reggie Dupart, who's carried it 12 times for 36. So Atkins, who had the 112-yard game last week, 440 yards, second in the league coming into today's action, approaching the 500-yard mark, yard, under the 500-yard mark for the season. Under two minutes to go, second down and eight. King there to Morris. Did he have it? They say he was juggling the football and did not have possession when he came down. Ron Morris, number 23, almost comes up with a nice catch, but does not. And there's a third down. As the Longhorns bring in Mike Finn, a freshman defensive tackle from Texarkana. As Llewellyn leaves the ball game, perhaps a bit winded, so a fresh pass rusher comes in on third and eight with a minute 50 to go in a tie ball game. Five DBs in there for the Mustang for the Longhorns as the Mustang come out with Dupart off the draw and Reggie, big yardage. A 13 yard run, Gerard Senegal brings him down but not before the Mustangs come up with a first down at the 34. Now, SMU should have all three of their timeouts left as Senegal prevents what would have been an even bigger SMU gain as he gains the feet of Reggie Dupart, as you see on the replay, to bring him down. Ball at the 37. King. Middle screen with wide open Albert Reese. Reckon havoc in the Texas secondary is Albert Reese on a 38-yard and run from Don King. Tony Tillman finally brings him down. That play worked to perfection in the TCU game. I say screen, not really. Somewhat of a screen, but that's a deception play all the way, trying to get the Texas flow going to the right. And Greece, you just forget about him. Normally a blocker. He makes himself available to King across the field. And big yardage available for him, as well as Reggie Dupart, who gets eight, maybe nine more. Tony Tillman drives him out of bounds with a minute four to play in the first half. Well, here's an SMU drive that started at their own 21-yard line. Mustangs have timeouts available in a tie ball game. 58 yards rushing now for Reggie Dupart on 14 carries, the unofficial numbers. As Elmer Thomas leaves the game, 
a second and one upcoming and lots of time for the Mustangs to do something here as we wind down the second quarter of play out of the I formation Morrison the fullback with first down yardage Morrison and Dupart lining up out of the I formation that's Kobe Morrison with only his third carry of the afternoon and late in the first half it's SMU six Texas six. and 10 Mustangs. King lost it up. Going for Morris, but overthrows him. And a flag down as the reaction of the crowd might indicate pass interference. Tony Griffin, not Tony Tillman, Tony Griffin, man on coverage down there. As the pass interference will give SMU the first down and advance the ball even further toward the goal line. And you can understand mixed reaction here is the SMU fans love the call and the Texas fans dislike it. That was a pass similar to the one that the Mustangs tried in late in the fourth quarter against Texas last year that produced no points and cost them the win down in Austin. This will put the ball half the distance to the goal. Defensive pass interference. to do part and Steve Llewellyn is there to say hello to him after a two yard gain 43 seconds to go in the first half and here is an SMU timeout as King goes over to the side to talk to his head coach Bobby Collins Don a very very solid game last week against Houston 9 of 14 through the air 79 yards and a touchdown Channel 21 pulls out the big guns in November, and two of them belong to Clint Eastwood. On November 5th, he takes on the Big Apple in Coogan's Bluff. And then on November 12th, he's the one and only Dirty Harry. We were talking about Don King, who is visiting with Milo McCarthy, the guy with the headsets on, Ken Pope, the wide receivers coach, the fellow in the red shirt nearest to you, and Bobby Collins. In the middle of that conversation, as they send King back, we were talking about Don's performance last week. He didn't pile up the big numbers himself, but he engineered a near perfect SMU offense as they hold up over 400 yards in total offense, most of it on the ground. King passed when needed and effectively when needed. Don not having the kind of individual year that he did last year when he gained over 2,000 yards of total offense, although still plenty of time for him to get high and produce even those kinds of numbers. But King is always doing a very solid job of running the SMU offense. Here's a second and nine, 43 seconds to go. Out of the I formation, it's Morrison and Dupart. Top of your screen, Morris. Bottom of your screen, Jeff Jacobs. King flips it out to Dupart, who will get in easily for an SMU touchdown. They paid way too much attention to Morris and Jacobs and not enough attention to Reggie Dupard off the safety valve coming out of the backfield. And Reggie Dupard scores with 37 seconds to go from nine yards away. That was a 79-yard drive. And they did it with two minutes and 30 seconds to go, or two minutes and 30 seconds to go in the half. They scored the touchdown in less than two minutes' time. A 79-yard, eight-play drive. And the Mustangs only had to call one timeout to get it down there. Brown will try the extra point. This one's up. And this one is good. So with 37 seconds to play here in the first half, Mustangs break out on top for the second time this afternoon, 13 to 7. King, you can see, does a nice job of looking downfield to fake out the Texas defensive backs, and there's Reggie Dupart easily outrunning Senegal and Tony Griffin. But the little look that you could barely catch in your picture that he gave to the defenders taking care of the middle of that end zone had a hand, I think, in springing Dupart out of the backfield for that easy score. 
high fives all around for the Mustangs, who snapped a two game losing streak last week in the win over Houston and are looking to snap a two game losing streak to the Longhorns here this afternoon. SMU's last win, as you saw at the top of the show, 1982 in Austin, when they beat Texas 30 to 17 and went on to the Cotton Bowl and an 11 0 and 1 season and a number two national ranking. 37 seconds left to go. Keith Samples again down on the field, and at halftime, we expect and plan interviews with both the head coaches. Brownlee kicking off a line drive that will bounce. This is Donovan Pitts. Pitts fumbles, and SMU, will they get it? Looks like Texas covered it. There was a Mustang there, but he just couldn't see it. Dick Sherrick was close, but at the bottom of the pile, you'll find a Longhorn. Livingston, number six, who belts the ball out of the hands. And Bradley Pivato and Dick Sherrick were close, but not any closer than Anthony Byerly, who picks it up. So Donovan Pitts, almost a very costly fumble for the Longhorns, who had fumbled three times this afternoon and given it up only once. And Todd Dodge, with only 30 seconds to go, is in the ball game. the senior out of Fort Arthur. First action of the afternoon, you would expect some passing here. Dodge under pressure. Flushed out of the pocket. Here he goes out of bounds. Using up six seconds. John Eitzman drove him out of bounds. Terrence Mann, number 92, applying the pressure on Dodge as the Longhorns. Not much time to work with here. Timeouts available to them, but 86 yards away from their end zone. Second and 16. Dodge, the number one ranked passer in the Southwest Conference thrown four touchdown passes had 359 yards a school record through the air against the Rice Owls but has not been the starter this year it's been Brett Stafford they've used Dodge as a relief pitcher if you will and Todd off the draw play this time the Longhorns will stay conservative and that will pretty well use things up to end the second quarter Jerome Johnson on the carry as the clock moves with 13 and winds down under 10 now seven Will do it for the first half. As expected, a hard hitting at first half. The 13 to 7 halftime score identical to the final score of last year's ball game in Austin. And the first half, in many ways, similar to the last two Texas SMU games with turnovers making the difference. As Keith Samples prepares to garner one of the coaches. He's going to visit with Bobby Collins, and let's go to Keith Samples and Bobby Collins. Thank you, Bill. Coach Collins, a typical SMU Texas game in the first half, big plays and turnovers. Well, there's no doubt about that. You know, it, it uh, seems to be always be that way, and uh, you know, you you work on it, and you you, you try to not do it, and, and then we we got a turnover, and gives them three points, and then we get a turnover, man, we get a touchdown out of it. Kicking game and, and, uh, and turnovers, it's, it's always a hard-hitting contest. Did you do anything different that last drive before the half when you had big success moving it? Well, I think that, you know, one thing is that probably just before the half, and they probably were not playing as tight as they normally play, and it gave us an opportunity to, to uh, you know, work a few plays in there. But, uh, you know, we got to mix them up. we got to run and throw the football, and hopefully, like that last drive, we can do it some in the second half. Thank you, Coach. Good luck in the second half, Bill. Let's go back up to you. Okay, thanks a lot, Keith. 13-7, to 7, the halftime score is the Mustang score two touchdowns a couple of Texas field goals and that's where we stand here at Texas Stadium a big crowd on hand good football game 13 to 7 SMU leading the Texas Longhorn at halftime Don King with a nine yard run and then a run by a pass catch from Reggie Dupard to close out the first half and a couple of field goals. Our guest at halftime, well, it's basketball season. On November, on October 15th, the basketball teams began to work out, so the seasons are starting to overlap. And this fellow is Dave Bliss, the SMU basketball coach. You guys have been at it, what, about a week and a half now? First, let's talk a little bit about the first half. What do you think of the football game? Well, I, you know, I'm not much of a football coach. Uh, I'm uh, a lot of people not sure I'm a basketball coach, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's obviously enjoyable 
capable to be ahead of the Longhorns, so we'll go from there. Okay, well, I'll tell you, they've still got 30 minutes of football left, but you've got a whole season of basketball coming up. Your first game on the 23rd against Windsor, an exhibition game, and then our first broadcast on Channel 21, the 30th against, what, Morgan State at Moody Coliseum. Right, well, we're really looking forward to having our games this year telecast, and uh, in the situation against Morgan State, it'll give us our first opportunity to really show a brand new basketball team, and as you know, Bill, we graduated our whole front line, or at least lost most of it, along with Carl Wright's uh, uh, defection, as I call it, to the pros. But with the situation that we've got, we've got a lot of young players that I think the people will look forward to watching play. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the guys you've got coming back. Concac, Carl Wright, and Larry Davis are gone this year, so Butch Moore, really the only returning, not the only returning starter, but the big name, I guess, off last year's team. Well, I think in many respects, it's Butch Moore's team. He certainly has played a lot of basketball for us in the past, and I think that he's going to be a player that will allow a lot of the younger players to come along real fast. Our freshmen, especially Reginald Muhammad, uh, I think has shown well in practice. Randy Jones has shown well in practice, but uh, still Butch has done well to make them look even better than maybe their uh, years of experience might show. And along with Kevin Lewis and really Scott Johnson and Terry Williams, I think we've got the nucleus to have a surprisingly good team. Most people, uh, in fact, it's funny to see the players, they'll come in with the basketball magazines and they'll see where we're picked from fifth, sixth, or seventh or something, and they're determined to show better. Let's talk a little bit about this Reginald Mohammed, a 6'9 freshman out of Wilmer Hutchins here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Is he ready to play right now? Well, uh, whether or not he's ready by John uh, Conkak's graduation, we've got to put him in there. Uh, he's going to play a lot of basketball, whether he starts or not. Uh, again, a lot of the uh, experienced players ahead of him, uh, especially Glenn Putty, has played well this fall. But uh, he'll have a chance to play a lot of basketball. He's a neat player uh, at 6'9". He's still growing. Uh, his heart is as big as his chest. And uh, by that, I mean he just tries so hard that people are going to love watching him play. And along with Terry Williams, I think the three of those players will give us some good insight side strength. Dave, finally, before I let you go, this is a unique year in the Southwest Conference. You know, the last three or four years, there's been a clear-cut favorite. There was Houston for those three straight years. You guys were the favorite last year, but this year, I don't really uh, detect that. It's more like uh, it's anybody's ball game. Well, it really is anybody's ball game, and uh, I think any one of about six teams could win it, and uh, I hope that we can be one of those six teams. I think the team that perhaps has the best chance to come together and play well as a team uh, has the best chance, as last year with Texas Tech's winning it, but more than anything else, we are determined to not let some of the things that uh, kind of befell us last year occur again this year, and really work hard on just becoming a very difficult to beat basketball team. Okay, Dave, appreciate it. Always okay. a pleasure talking Thanks to you. Thanks a lot, Bill. Okay, Dave Bliss, the SMU basketball coach, and again, we will have a full schedule of SMU basketball on Channel 21 this year, beginning with the November 30th Morgan State game. Take a look at the first quarter stats. As you see SMU owning the rushing advantage there. Texas doing most of the passing. Keith Samples has rejoined us. Turnovers in that first quarter. That one by SMU, Keith, made the big difference. Texas converted it into a, into a field goal. And then a look at the halftime stats. SMU owning the first down lead really turned around in the second quarter as the Mustangs for the most part took over there. 111 yards rushing now for SMU to only 84 for the Longhorns passing pretty close and Texas owning a two minute time of possession advantage. In fact our statistician Dave Yegi told us that the uh, field goal the second field goal from the Longhorns took seven minutes and 13 seconds. That drive was a seven minute 13 second drive. So total yards pretty even both ways and that turnover by Texas in the second quarter Keith led to the uh, SMU touchdown. So turnovers, even though only one for each ball club, both played a big factor in the first half. They really did, Bill. Both turnovers leading to points for the other team. And a big stat to look at is the total yards. If you remember at the end of the first quarter, SMU had just 51 total yards. Look what they did in the second quarter. And traditionally this season, the second quarter has been Texas's quarter. They've outscored their opponents by 30 points in the second quarter. But not today as the SMU Mustangs rolled up over 100 yards total offense in that second quarter and grabbed the lead. 13-6 our score at halftime as the SMU Mustangs again get a touchdown run from Don King, a missed extra point, and then a 21-yard or a 9-yard touchdown pass from Reggie Dupard from Don King to Reggie Dupard to close things out at halftime. As SMU scores two touchdowns, the Longhorns get two Jeff Ward field goals, and that's where we are at halftime with SMU leading Texas 13-6.
on the sideline with Texas coach Fred Akers. Coach, this is going to be old hat. Close games, hard hitting, big plays. Yeah, every one of these things has turned out to be a real hard hitter. Yeah, uh, they had several big plays. They didn't need our help. And we're going to have to get that corrected. Right before the half, they had one long drive. Did they do anything offensively different? Well, they, they executed very well. They did use their tight end a little differently than they have, and it was a very good play. Coach, good luck to you in the second Thank half. You. That's Texas coach Fred Akers. As he says, the SMU Mustangs, just as Bobby Collins said, did things a little bit differently on that last drive at the, to end the first half. Let's go back upstairs to Bill. Okay, 13 to 6, SMU leading Texas at halftime. This exclusive KTXA sports presentation is being brought to you by your Gulf States Toyota dealer and the new 4x4 gas turbo truck. More power and more off-road performance than ever before. And by Coors Light. Turn it loose tonight with the silver bullet. Well, big plays and breaks made the difference in that first half of play. Again, in the first quarter, only one score, although there were two field goal tries by Jeff Ward of Texas, a 42-yard field goal by Ward to make it 3-0. Longhorns, that followed a Don King fumble. Then in the second quarter, a Don King nine-yard run following a Medwin Simmons fumble. The extra point no good. That made it 6-3. to three. Then a 43-yard field goal from Jeff Ward to make it 6-6. Six, six. And then a nine-yard King to depart pass following a pass interference call on Tony Griffin at about the three-yard line to set up the score. 13-6 our score. This is a look at the first SMU touchdown as King, who has that native ability not only to read the option well but to turn on the afterburners himself that made it 6-3 Mustangs leading to the 13-6 score that we have now as we get ready to begin the third quarter of play as the Mustangs kick it off to the Longhorns Eric Metcalf and Norman Nunn deep Metcalf three yards deep as running room one man only the kicker, only Rod Jones back to stop him, and he'll get it all the way to the 20-yard line. Rod Jones, who has sprinter speed, the only reason that Eric Metcalf didn't run that one back. And Rod Jones, not the kicker, but Rod Jones, the guy that SMU purposely keeps back on safety valve kickoff situations to prevent just such occasions. He breaks through the first wave of tacklers. Look like Brad Pivato. That's Andrew Livingston, number six. He's walled off by a blocker. And here's Rod Jones, who had the angle. But look at Metcalf explode down the sidelines. To the 25, that is a 78-yard kickoff return. And here's Brett Stafford in the Longhorns. Stafford, the quarterback, out of the I formation. Hunter, the tailback on first down. Slips a bit and up from his linebacking spot, T.D. Briggs, who was injured this week, the number three tackler on the Mustang team. Playing as expected and stopping Hunter on first down. A couple of final scores to pass along to you. Georgia has beaten Kentucky 26-6. And Arkansas over Houston big today in the Southwest Conference, 57-27. So the Razorbacks recover from that upset loss to the Longhorns last week. Second and ten, just underway in the third quarter. 13-6, Mustangs leading this one. Long count from Stafford. Gabriel Johnson at the bottom of your screen. Gay at the top. Hunter, quick hitter at right tackle. Big yardage, first down yardage. 14 yards on that one all the way to the 11. Hunter behind some good blocking from that front line of Ergel, Blackmar, Chilton, Brian Chester, and John Stewart as Pivato, a safety there to bring him down. And make what appeared to be a touchdown saving tackle. A nickel formation, five defensive backs in the coverage for the Mustangs, and it took at least two of them to collar Charles Hunter. Here's a first and 10 at the SMU 11-yard line. The tight end is William Harris. Stafford and Hunter for the third straight play. This time, not much there. It's amazing how often the tailback carries the ball in this Texas offense. Two out of every three runs, they give it to the tailback. At least that's been the history so far this year, looking at their stats. And 73% of the time, the Longhorns run the football. So the Texas tailbacks get a lot of work, and that's why they recruit so many of them. Second and seven, approaching the 13-minute mark. Longhorns looking to tie this football game. Remember, the Mustangs missed an extra point in the second quarter, which could play a role in this.
this ball game. Here's Hunter, fourth straight carry, behind the blocking of Bruce Blackmore, number 69, weaving his way inside the five-yard line. Jerry Ball again, who had 10 tackles in the game last year against Texas. The junior nose guard from Beaumont Westbrook along that front line. The big number 91, Joe Phillips. Number 80 is Wade Johnson. Frankie Thomas coming out of the ball game. In is Terrence Mann. So four defensive linemen for the Mustangs on third and two. Keith Samples is rejoining us. I didn't, I didn't miss anything that I <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, you have to hurry in this game. They said it was going to be big plays, and that 78-yard kickoff return sets up Brett Stafford run to the two-yard line. Keith, where were you? Did you see it, or were you coming back up the elevator, or what? Did you miss the return? I saw it briefly, and I heard most of it. The crowd roar. Uh, Terry, uh, I want to say Terry. I said it. I, his dad, Terry. I said little, the same thing. Little Metcalf, heck of a punt and kickoff return, man. And uh, both coaches surprisingly relaxed to see him uh, as they went into the locker room and back out of the locker room at halftime. Neither one of them real charged up or real tense. Here is another fourth down. Fourth down and one. The ball is at the two. Well, they say fourth and one. And it looks like the Longhorns are going to have to call a timeout with only nine seconds showing on the 25-second clock. Stafford calls time. And the scoreboard says fourth and one, but, boy, it's fourth and less than one. Fourth and about eight inches. And the Longhorns have decided to talk it over, trailing 13-6 to six in the third quarter. SMU cheerleaders, their defense on the field right now. Fourth down and less than a yard for the Longhorns. Inside the SMU five-yard line, they need to gain the two, and they're at about the two and a half. Bill, I think they're paying me to say something more insightful than this is a big play, but it's a big play. And it's a big play. The third time the Longhorns have gone for it on fourth down. Remember, they've not scored a touchdown in more than two ball games. Stacked full house, wishbone backfield, option pitch, Metcalf. Metcalf, well, I don't know. Mustangs think they stopped him. He needed to gain the two. Metcalf may not have it. He doesn't. You can credit the entire SMU defense because they strung it out. You know, take a look at it. There you see the replay with Metcalf out there. Boy, the SMU defense, there are a bunch of them over there making the play, but you got to wonder, why do you go wide? You need a foot on the play. Why don't you power it up the middle with a quarterback sneak or a straight handoff? Why in the world do you go outside and have a chance for going for the loss? Especially with all those big running backs. Number four, Daryl Reese contained it. And number 44, Kit Case, who has played an outstanding game, finished off. Here's King at the two-yard line. To start things conservatively for the Mustangs is Reggie Dupard, who gets maybe a yard out to the three. Maybe the play of the game so far probably is the play of the game. Texas driving, trying to get within a point and perhaps tie with the extra point, trailing 13 to six. And on fourth down and less than a yard, Eric Metcalf, the speedster, the 5'9 freshman goes outside and the Mustangs stack him up. Boy, that's hard to figure. It really is. You got guys like Edwin Simmons and Hunter who's bounced off tackle after tackle for extra yardage. Mustangs are taking no chances, it appears here. This is the power eye backfield. Take that back. King decides he wants to roll out and almost track to a safety. Look for a moment like he might throw, but he says, nope, I'm going to keep it. And guess who made the tackle? Uh, I was just going to say, guess who? Ty Allard, the guy who's too hurt to play today. And who can't move laterally. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like a pretty good lateral move to me. Really, I should be so quick. Yeah, here you see King. Although he looked like he might try to pass, I really think it was a run all the way. And there you see that guy who's limping around laterally, Ty Allard. They say he's an All-American candidate. I'm calling him All-American already. What a great football player. Came into the game as Texas's leading tackle with 62 total tackles, 53 of those unassisted, and he's added to those totals today. Here is a third down and 11. And I would doubt that he will do anything too fancy here. They get it to Depart, who fancies out four or five yards for seven. And Dodge Carter will have to punt from deep in his own territory. Bobby Collins just happy to stop that touchdown drive and not trying to do anything particularly artistic down there. And now they depend on the good foot of Dodge Carter, who is the third best punter in the Southwest Conference well, this year. They've got a punt from the tight formation, too, so it's going to be harder to cover the punt, and that should give Metcalf a chance to return it. Well, Metcalf will have a chance to redeem himself, but he'll let it bounce. Now pick it up. 
Jukes too. Can he get outside? Nope. Fumbles the ball. Scramble for it. Looks like the Mustangs have it. Metcalf did everything right except go down without losing the football. And the kid holding the ball up high is Ken Masterson, number 60. Whoa, wow. That's a series of big plays in this game. Texas was going to get the ball back in great field position around midfield. And what happens? The fumble is recovered, and now the Mustangs have the field position with that seven-point lead. A 49-yard punt. They didn't look that great from Dodge Carter, but got the distance. It bounced, and Metcalf feels it on the bounce, does a nice job there, and then fumbles it away. King and Atkins hook up. Atkins is driven back as he gets maybe two yards. Somebody stuck a shoulder and knocked Jeff Atkins back. Ty Allard among those in there as the senior from Houston limping around a bit down there. Bottom of your screen at the 50-yard line, limping around. Here's Metcalf's return. There you see, and he does probably a little bit of a foolish thing in trying to return this so so much. It bounced a couple of times, and the SMU defense had it covered well, and as he goes down, he loses the ball, and the Mustangs recover for the good field position. Nine minutes left in the third. Mustangs up 13 to six, second down eight. Atkins trying to go wide. Broken up in the backfield by Ty Allard and Gerard Senegal, the kid who contained him and drove him back to the inside. You know, Bill, even if SMU doesn't get a first down on this series, that fumble recovery has changed the whole complexion of the second half in terms of field position because Texas had the Mustangs backed up even though they didn't score the touchdown, and it looked like we were going to be playing on SMU's end of the field in the second half. Instead, it turns it around, and now we're at Texas's end of the field. I don't know how many times I've heard Fred Akers say the key to a football game were the breaks in the kicking game, and this particular situation is true. It's a sophomore from Dallas Roosevelt, a perfectly thrown pass from King. I want to retract my rhetorical philosophy about the field position. They got great field position now. Jacobs does beat him, goes right over the middle, and he is one half step away from scoring six points. Well, Jacobs, who caught only two passes in his first real action of the season last week against Houston, gets his first big gainer of the year. Here is a first and goal SMU at the Texas two. Over the top, Atkins, and right tackle flag down in the only the second penalty, third penalty of the afternoon. There was the pass interference. There was an offsides against SMU. And here is only the third flag that I count of the day. And we still await the indication. Something thrown into the middle of the pile, and the Mustangs are pointing toward the Longhorns. Well, we're scrambling here. Right? participation. That is a rather exotic call, one you don't see that often. I had to refer to my 12 men, evidently. 12 men in the game, perhaps? Yeah. It's the only thing I can think of, yeah. And the yeah. guy who comes out now to get him down to 11 is Ty Allard, and he is flipping a little bit. Yeah, illegal participation, the to call. Too many men on the field, I guess. Let's listen. listen. of officials calls we get that one here is a first and goal at the one here's Dupard Dupard may not have it looks like he doesn't as the Longhorns drive him back Mark Petkovic is number 41 walks away from that stack of humanity along with number 46 Bobby Duncan I tell you Bill the, the most active place on these two campuses tomorrow are going to be the whirlpools in the training room these guys <laughs> have had some knocks traded out there uh, you're talking about a defensive line for Texas that averages about 265 pounds a man to an SMU offensive line that averages 270 muscle on muscle man on man Atkins driving again appears not to have it the ball has to cross the plane you've heard that old cliche many times but it does and the ball doesn't this time he comes up just inches shy of a touchdown third and goal from about the six inch mark the Mustangs averaging about six inches a carry on this series down on the goal line. There was a Texas man at the bottom of that pile. I would like to call it Blake Groner, but we'll hold off on that. Here's a third down, and that is the power eye. Morrison and Hashimoto. 
away the fullbacks, Dupard, the tailback, Dupard diving. He has the touchdown. At left tackle, Reggie Dupard on third down and short from a half yard away. Following the Eric Metcalf fumble, Reggie Dupard with the touchdown, his second of the afternoon. Let's see it again here, Bill. The, the vote down there wasn't unanimous. There were some detractors about whether or not he got into the end zone, but it definitely looks like he crossed the plane of the goal from that replay. And uh, can I say it again, pretty big play, big score to have a 20 to six lead if he converts on the extra point here with uh, just a little over six minutes to play in the third quarter. To make it 20 to six, here's Brandy Brownlee. Looks like he has it, and he does. A short run from Reggie Dupard following a fumble. Brandy Brownlee's extra point makes it 20 to six, SMU. see more passes and draws and calls than in today's game. Of course, we're talking about poker. And when the chips are down, nobody holds them and folds them like Kenny Rogers is the gambler. Next Saturday on KTXA Television. 51-yard six-play drive, and the fumble did it, Keith. Well, once again, the turnover. We said it at the very top of the telecast. The turnovers and big plays would be the key. There you see the after the fumble recovery of the Metcalf punt. It's six plays, 51 yards, two minutes and 53 seconds. They get the touchdown to go up 20 to six. You can't really be too critical of Eric Metcalf, though. He's boy, he's turned in some big returns for him. In fact, had him in scoring position just the series before, and his teammates didn't capitalize. Certainly an exciting player. Interesting sequence. Texas had fourth and goal or fourth down and a half yard to go inside the five yard line. Fail. SMU punts, recovers the fumble, and then scores the touchdown. This is Norman Nunn, a senior out of Austin. He went to Navarro Junior College and a very nice young man. Brings it out to the 22 yard line. He was a walk on, only 5'7, but he's a load and a very fast little football player. Norman's the leading kickoff return man in the Southwest Conference coming into the game today, even though the long one a moment ago to open the third quarter was turned in by Eric Metcalf. And so Texas now trailing by two touchdowns, and Todd Dodge comes into the game. The senior Todd Dodge, which would signal perhaps a change in Texas philosophy as they send the senior Dodge, who has been booed off and on this year by Texas fans, but the leading passer in the Southwest Conference. Well, I think they're going to have to go to the air as we see him go. Sends Metcalf in motion over the middle. Very short and intercepted by Kit Case. Not even close. Kit Case returns it to the 37. Appeared to be going for perhaps Everett Gage. Number 19, it was in the picture. But that ball wasn't even close. Right into the arms of Kit Case. Boys, you said it. There's not much more I can say. It's that even close. Look how there's not a white jersey within 10 yards of that ball in Kit Case. He probably couldn't believe how easily that interception came his way, and the Mustangs have a chance here to put this thing on ice. Only the fourth interception of the year by the Mustangs, the first one by Kit Case. And here's SMU looking to tack on some more. Morris and Jeff Jacobs, a wide out. Atkins the tailback. Atkins with running room. Atkins down to the 33-yard line. Call it second and five. As the Longhorns, perhaps a bit tired, a bit frustrated, start shuttling people. You had to feel coming into the game today that a Texas win would put them in great shape for the Cotton Bowl because their home games are against Baylor. And Baylor has not beaten Texas and Austin in a long time. But the Mustangs are thwarting that right now. Mustangs among the national leaders in rushing is Hashaway drives it inside the 30-yard line. Well, you know, it's incredible how quickly the complexion of this game turned around. Texas gets a second-half kickoff down by seven, has a 70-yard return, there's down on the goal line knocking at the door trying to tie it up, but all of a sudden, in a couple of possessions, it's, it's completely flipped. They have no momentum whatsoever. They're down by 14 and in trouble of being blown out. And again, still, Texas has not scored a touchdown offensively two full games and working on a third one here this afternoon. That is a remarkable stat in itself as there is movement along both lines of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively as the yellow flags fly. This game again has been relatively, relatively devoid of penalties so far this afternoon. Now we've seen a couple here within a short period. 
Mustangs are flagged for five. Now you see the right tackle, the tight end move up to the top of your screen. Chris Jenkins, number 90. That'll set the Mustangs back five yards, and they'll be looking at a third and eight. Instead of third and three, now third and eight. And the Mustangs with a two touchdown, 20 to six lead, but love to pad here, pad the lead here. Depart out of the draw. Good penetration by Kip Cooper, number 90. Kip Cooper, the senior, former high school teammate of Dodges at Port Arthur, who returned that fumble for a touchdown against Oklahoma. Now this is going to be a pretty big field goal, although you might not think so with the. Uh... 443 and counting to play, and the Mustangs ahead by 14 points. But what this field goal would do would force Texas into a situation where they'd have to score three times, two touchdowns with two point conversions each time, and a field goal to win this football game. So it's an important field goal for SMU. A 50 yarder would be the longest of Brownlee's career. He's three of five, hit three last week. This one partially blocked. Rolling into the end zone, Brownlee's field goal is partially blocked. Texas holds. Just didn't appear that he got it up very high. A replay would possibly show different, but that might add some spark to the Texas sideline. But we mentioned Johnny Kip Cooper a moment ago. The defensive end, he has the last Texas touchdown two games ago against Oklahoma. Well, keep in mind, too, on the missed field goal, the unsuccessful field goal attempt, the ball is brought back out to the line of scrimmage, so Texas is going to get possession of this football back out around their own 34-yard line and might talk about a potential blowout in the making, maybe turning around, too, if the Longhorns can have a drive here. You saw Fred Akers a moment ago, an impeccable record at Texas. has won almost or over 79% of his games. Here's Metcalf. He's prone to make things happen, sometimes good, sometimes bad. This time gets it out near the 40-yard line. Boy, fun player to watch, so look here on the replay. Now, there's a guy who doesn't have any trouble with lateral movement. He's got the lateral moves. He can dart in and out of that hole. Nice run for a six-yard game. And strong also, John Eichsman, big number 65, being dragged along by the little guy, Metcalf. Second and four. Metcalf again. Metcalf with first down yardage this time. It took Keith Brooks in the secondary to contain him. First down, Longhorns. Texas with 11 first downs. Mustangs have 12. It didn't start out that way. Depart, 68 yards rushing, 52 for Atkins. Metcalf, four carries now, 17 yards. Charles Hunter, the leading ball carrier unofficially for the Longhorns, 51 yards on 13 carries. And Neither offense generating the big numbers, but the breaks have made the difference. Every day the pass is overthrown as Dodge. Now 0 for 2 with an interception. Overthrows Everett Gay, who is a junior out of Houston. Bill, you know, you got to believe at some point during Eric Metcalf's career, Fred Akers is going to be tempted to give him the ball 20, 25 times in a game and just see what happens. He's liable to break a couple of long ones if he were given the opportunity to carry it that many times in a football game. It's remarkable how similar to his dad that he is. Terry Metcalf, who played so many years for the St. Louis Cardinals. Not big, great runner. And Dodge under pressure. And sack. T.D. Briggs blitzing and Joe Phillips buried him. And that has to hurt because Phillips weighs 300 pounds, hit him from the backside. Boy, a lot of blue shirts come charging in and Dodge tries to duck under the first wave, loses his balance and goes down in the arms of Phillips. So 0 for 2 passing for Dodge and throwing a sack there. And SMU's defense, which gets far too little credit for their successes over the years, starting to take control of this football game. Third and 18, 20 to six SMU leading, 240 to play here in the third quarter, and Dodge looking to throw. Going deep, way over the head of the intended receiver, Everett Gay. Frankie Thomas, the closest man in there, you know, hearing some boos from the Texas fans who booed Dodge after a three for 10 performance in the opening game of the year against Missouri. And then about the time they give up on Todd, he comes back and has a great game, but he played not well in the Oklahoma game and is 0 for 3 so far this afternoon, a punting situation for John Telcher. Well, Frankie Thomas was playing center field on that pass and really had a chance to make the interception if he'd have floated back a little quicker. Oh, almost blocked, and here's...
Chris Telchik running toward the first down. Get the ball away somehow. Did he cross the line of scrimmage? I guess not. Give Telchik a lot of credit because it appeared that Ben Hummel was about to block that punt. It rolls dead at the four-yard line. Well, he did cross the line of scrimmage, but you can. You can. On the punt. On a punt. Okay. And look what he did. What a tremendous play by John Telchik. <laughs> a 41-yard kick after a 14-yard run. You cannot pass once you cross the line of scrimmage, but you can kick. And Telchik did that, almost blocked back there by SMU. But Telchik, who is a good athlete himself, turns that into something good for the Longhorns, who trail SMU 20-6. Well, John Telchik was one of the leading punters in the country last year, and he shows why that time, a 41-yard punt after almost getting it blocked, running 14 yards, somehow nailing the ball, not only getting it off, but pinning SMU inside their four-yard line. Now it's time for the Texas defense to do something if the Longhorns are to get back in this one. There's on first down with 2.09 to go in the third quarter. The Mustangs again stay conservative down deep in their own territory as Dufar carries once again. You think Bobby Collins would like one of those seven-minute offensive drives right now? I bet he'd take one. That would run it. That would eat up. A seven-minute drive right now would leave Texas ten minutes to go and three touchdowns behind. I bet Bobby would trade the birthday presents he probably got yesterday. Bobby turned 51 yesterday. He did recognize that. Here's Kobe Morrison, the big fullback from the sophomore from Dallas, has a lot of running room, fumbles the ball after the tackle by Tillman, and that is Jeff Jacobs running it in for the touchdown. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, they say three plays can happen in this game. Remember in the tease to open the ball game, we showed you the tip pass that won it for SMU in 1982. That is Jeffrey Jacobs, who picks up the Kobe Morrison fumble and runs it in for the touchdown. A uh, pretty good day for Jacobs, getting his first real action of the season. Kobe Morrison's running out of gas right here, and he tries to move the ball from his right hand, his inside hand, to his outside hand. Look at that. It comes loose and bounces right in Jeffrey Jacobs' hand. And there he goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, here's the extra point try from Brownlee as you hear the reaction. Keith, we need to bring up a point. The defense cannot advance a fumble recovery. They have to pick it up out of the air, but if the offense can, you can pick it up and run with it. Yeah, the offense can advance a fumble recovery even though it hits the turf. It's a defensive unit that has to catch it in the air in order to advance it. And that's why Jeffrey Jacobs was able to pick that ball up on the bounce and go the final 30 yards for a touchdown and give the SMU Mustangs maybe not an insurmountable lead, but a very large lead at 27 to 6. And there you see that it's headed toward the end zone, and Jacobs just says, well, I guess I'll go with it. Pitches on for the ride, and he's in for six points. Well, you'll see that one on, a, on some highlight, highlight reels for a while around SMU for sure. Here's Eric Metcalf letting it bounce and taking it eight yards deep and taking no chances with it. A minute 27 to go here in the third quarter, and SMU holding a 27-6 lead. Only two Texas field goals, both of those coming in the first half. It has been all SMU. Depart with a touchdown pass, a touchdown run. King, a touchdown run. And moments ago, as you look at Bobby Collins, who celebrated a birthday yesterday, breathing a little easier now. The guy next to him is linebacker coach Robert Henry. But moments ago, a 95-yard run by Kobe Morrison and Jeffrey Jacobs. Here is the reverse by Eric Metcalf, who's looking to throw and does and completes it to every game. Oh, my goodness, they're playing a little schoolyard ball now. Both teams are having some success with the flea flickers. That guy looks like they might have tried him as the relief quarterback. He threw it pretty well. Metcalf's showing, just like his father, he can do a lot of things on the football field. He's a running back. He returns punts and kickoffs. He can throw the football. You stick him in there in the secondary, he'll probably make a tackle or two for you. Number 12, Danny Akers, the son of the head coach, sending in the signals to the Texas quarterback, Todd Dodge, who still hasn't completed a pass. He's 0 for 3. Eric Metcalf completed that last one. Dodge will try it again. Dodge 
across the way. There's Gabriel Johnson at the 43-yard line. Longhorns in a position where they have to open it up. There's an 18-yard completion. Todd to, Dodge to Gabriel Johnson. A junior from South Oak Cliff playing against, as we said, a couple of his old high school teammates, Cornelius Dozier for SMU and Ron Jones, a senior quarterback. Minute 12 to go in the third. First and 10 Longhorns who trail by three touchdowns. Top of your screen is Everett Gage. That is Gabriel Johnson, number 31. Split backs this time, Metcalf and Jerome Johnson. Here's Dodge looking to throw again. Having to roll out and throwing it into the turf in front of Gabriel Johnson with coverage by Rod Jones. Second and 10. And that doesn't burn up much time on the clock as incompleted passes stop the clock. So a minute five to go in the third is still plenty of time, but Texas having shown no real ability to put the ball in the end zone for over two ball games, working on a third. Well, having some trouble. That's 11 consecutive quarters now. They've gone without scoring a touchdown. And that's uh, that might qualify as a drought. Yeah, I would think that would probably somehow they managed to win one of those games one last week. There's a nice pass to William Harris, and that may be the first time they found the big tight end this afternoon. Second time, an 18-yard gain. Harris now two catches for 27 yards. Bill, the pace of this game is going to slow down considerably as we get ready to start into the fourth quarter. It's been moving along at a pretty fast clip, but now that the Longhorns are going to start throwing it, it's going to slow down a little bit. Everett Gay, top of your screen. Bottom next, number 31, Gabriel Johnson. Split backs. This is a Longhorn passing formation. Quick drop dodge. Here's Everett Gay. Here's to the 12-yard line. And here's another SMU. Make that another Texas first down as Frankie Thomas makes the tackle. You know, ironically, this is the area of the football field where bad things have happened to Texas today. They lost a fumble down there. They tried to go for a uh, first down rather than a field goal. There you see the replay. Good catch. See a couple of final scores that happened today. Michigan came from behind to beat Indiana 42 to 15. They were behind early in that game, but as you can see, walloped them in the end. We'll give you a couple more in a minute. Here is a first and 10 at the 12. Mustang showing blitz. Picked up. Now not. It's fumbled by Todd Dodge as Benny Hummel makes the hit. And SMU is out there to recover it. Boy, that ball run. shot out of there, ricocheted all the way out to what, the 41 yard line before SMU finally picks it up. Is that TD Briggs? That's Kit Case. When it rains, it pours, doesn't it? Okay. AC never got a hand. Oh, he, had, he got the snap, and then he goes back to pass. And look at that. Good shot, and the ball is bouncing free again. It always bounces towards the SMU goal line today. Well, that was Ben Hummel and Kit Case and TD Briggs. A couple of Highland Park products are battling for the recovery, and they get it with 11 seconds to go. Here's a first and 10 Mustangs who are just dominating this football game, leading 27 to 6. Atkins on first down from the 41 to the 44. The third quarter comes to the end here at Texas Stadium. Three quarters of play completed in the Southwest Conference matchup, and things a bit different than they have been in the past two seasons. SMU leading and leading big. As we get ready to begin the fourth quarter, it's SMU 27, the Texas Longhorn 6. Unofficially with 244 yards of total offense to 321 for SMU. But a fumble, another one, fumbles that made the difference this afternoon. I count, what, three Texas fumbles so far. And then an interception in the third quarter by Kit Case of a Todd Dodge pass. But the last fumble, Dodge fumbling and TD Briggs recovering it. Giving SMU the ball as we began the fourth quarter. Second down and seven. And the handoff to Atkins will make it third and long. 1450 for the play in what has just become the start of the fourth quarter here at Texas Stadium. Well, Bill, I think probably the big beneficiaries of this SMU Texas shootout today may be the Baylor Bears. They won again today. They beat TCU and Arkansas defeated Houston today. So the Baylor Bears now have a one-game lead to stand atop the conference standings all by themselves. But the Bears have to go to Austin, and it's 
It's been a while since they've won there. Bader, of course, beat these Mustangs. King wants it all. Looking out there for Albert Reese, who's covered ably by Gerard Senegal. And a fourth down upcoming. Mustangs content with a three touchdown lead to take a gamble there and try to go ahead and put this one on ice. But Reese not able to outrun the coverage of Senegal, who's playing on a sprained ankle. But it has not been, I don't think, uh, the Texas injuries that we heard about that uh, played the difference today. It's just been just been turnovers. Mustangs have capitalized on Texas miscues. Dodge Carter punting from his own 35. Metcalf is there, but he will let it bound out at the nine yard line. 46 yard punt. And let's also not forget field position. Longhorns now have 90 yards to go for a touchdown. Well, Dodge Carter did a nice job of punting the ball away from Eric Metcalf. Carter's been a good punter, not only today, but throughout his career at SMU. I'll tell you, too, that Florida State beat North Carolina today, 20 to 10. Maryland beat Duke, 40 to 10. And the Oklahoma State Cowboys keep their hopes alive as we look at stats by beating Kansas 17 to 10. Look at that big, look at that difference in rushing yardage. 230 yards rushing through the third quarter and the total offense. Keep in mind now, too, that SMU had only 51 yards total offense at the end of the first quarter. And four Texas turnovers to only one for the Mustangs. And they've all played a big part in this game. Here's Kit Case intercepting for the second time, and he may have scored. Nope, caught from behind by Johnson. Boy, it looked like he had a, he had a, a lane for a touchdown there for a moment. I don't know what the rest of the people of the Southwest Conference did today, but you may be looking at a replay of the Southwest Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Kit Case has had a great game for the Mustangs today, his second interception. And boy, don't you know he wanted to get into the end zone on that one. It was very close, down to the six-yard line. We were trying to help him along, but uh, as good a player as Kit is, he's not the fastest guy in the Southwest Conference, and Jerome Johnson fought off a block to bring him down. Well, now this one becomes a route if SMU scores here. Leading 27 to 6. Power eye formation. Atkins, Dupard, and Hashaway, the three running backs. King will keep it himself and get it to the two. Same play that King used to score a nine yard touchdown run in the first half. Tony Griffin makes the tackle at the two yard line. And here's SMU knocking on the door again. And Another turnover. Three right. fumbles and now two interceptions. Uh, King running that option play and does a nice job. The Texas defense has got to be getting a little frustrated at this point in the game. We've been on the field a long time here in the second half and some mistakes that are not all necessarily there is causing them some problems. Here's second and goal from the two. That is the power eye formation. This is Dupard and right tackle he walks in. There's a flag down. Reggie Dupart already has two touchdowns today. Will this be number three? If it is, then this becomes a, a route of epidemic before, epic proportions and epidemic, I suppose, if you want to use those words. At least what you've seen in this series over the past three or four years. The penalty will be against the Texas Longhorns. Once again, too many men on the field, apparently. That's an illegal participation against the Longhorns, who perhaps once again have too many men on. That's the only thing I can, can come up with. But it's the same call that we saw in the third period with the same signal. And here is a 33 to 6 SMU lead with Brownlee on to try the extra point to make it 34 to 6. Out of the hold of Dodge Carter, it's good. Well, not exactly what we expected here this afternoon. But the score says it all, 34 to 6. SMU leading the Texas Longhorns. The 28 point lead by the SMU Mustangs and how close this series has been. You've got to go back to 1973 to find a game that was decided by 28 or more points between these two teams. In 1973, Texas beat SMU 42 to 14. And you were mentioning earlier, you have to go back to, what, 1965 to find a SMU win over Texas here in Dallas. So uh, a lot of unusual things happening here in Texas Stadium this afternoon as the Mustangs have a lot of balls bounce their way. Well, there'll be no question about this one. 
34 to 6. A satisfying win, I'm sure, for Bobby Collins and his staff. Here we are talking about a win with 13 17 to go, but I feel safe. I feel safe. The thing about it, but that doesn't mean you can tune over to another channel yet. You got to stay. <laughs> You've got to stay with us. We got a lot of big plays coming up. Well, you know, if this one, in my in my mind, turned, and I don't guess this is any great analysis on my part, but Eric McCaff failed on that fourth down and goal, and then the whole thing just caved in on Texas after that. Stafford back in the game at quarterback. Hits Everett Gay over the middle. Dodge ineffective, throwing two interceptions, three of eight through the air. And so Brent Stafford, the sophomore, comes back in. Tim Green slowly working his way back into the lineup. He is the starting free safety, but has been on the sidelines a lot this year with a neck injury. But there's number 17 making the tackle there. A 13-yard gain and a first down for the Longhorns, who now simply have to throw it in a lot. Terrence Mann applying the pressure. Coverage by Keith Brooks. Pass intended over there for Peter Pope. Bill, you don't want to belabor a point, but you still have to go back and look at that situation where you had, we have a flag on the field, we'll get the penalty, where you had the fourth down play by Texas down at the one and a half, two yard line, and they went wide on the play to Metcalf. Well, there's roughing the passer. A roughing the passer call against SMU. favorably received by the crowd. But you, you still have to wonder. They have the big offensive line. They got the big backs and Hunter and Simmons. And, and yet they went wide on an option type play and Metcalf didn't get the first down. And that was it. Texas trying to tie. They didn't. And it roughing the passer by the defense. Automatic first down. Well, that's about the best thing that's happened to Texas in a while. Out of the split back formation with a stand-up tight end, William Harris. Here's Stafford looking to throw again. Longhorns don't like to throw, and they get sacked. Another flag down. Terrence Mann and others in there to sack Brett Stafford. This is not patented Longhorn football. They like to run the ball and pass only when they feel it's going to aid their cause. Well, things may get a little sloppy here in the fourth quarter, too, Bill. It's uh, getting pretty much out of hand. Yeah. Now, that was illegal motion against Texas. Mustangs refused the penalty. Make it second and 15. And what appears to be a passing formation with Gabriel Johnson and Everett Gay. Gay at the bottom of your screen. Stafford with time. Now he's flushed out. My goodness, here comes Monty Goen. Blitzing and almost picked off by Keith Brooks. But it's obvious the Mustangs can just pin their ears back and come after the Texas quarterbacks now with 12-24 and a third in law. Well, they're getting good pressure. They've gotten good pressure on the quarterback all day. You know, Bill, we haven't talked much about the, the schedule that the Texas Longhorns have played in recent weeks, and it, probably you're seeing it take a little bit of its toll. They played Oklahoma here in Dallas in the Cotton Bowl a couple of weeks ago and then had to travel up to Fayetteville to play the Arkansas Razorbacks last week. We've mentioned a couple of times, SMU has never beaten Texas at Texas State. Beat them here in 1979, then 9-7 in 1981, and then 15-12 in 1983. That year, Texas went unbeaten, lost to Georgia in the Cotton Bowl. Third and long, this is Charles Hunter. Well short of the first down, as the Mustangs do a nice job of contain. Monty going, among others, there to corral him, and fourth down in a bunch. not so sure Fred Akers is going to punt the ball away. He will not. And why not when you're trailing 34 to 6 in the fourth quarter. Four touchdown. SMU lead. Fourth and seven. Ball at the 49. The Longhorns will go for it. Harris the tight end. Two wide receivers. Quick drop Stafford and here he's looking again. Not able to complete the pass to Everett Gabe. Pressure applied by the freshman Robert Dade. And the Mustangs take over again. And from the lit sound of this SMU crowd, they smell blood, I think, Keith, and they want to get even more. Well, they've got enough right now. 34 to 6, Mustangs leading the Longhorns.
Stafford under pressure, Keith. Well, look, and you can see on the replay, it looks like a close non-call. Maybe Rod Jones guilty of pass interference out there on the corner, but the flag didn't fly, so there they, is no penalty. They have liberalized the pass, the uh, cornerback's ability to let the wide receiver a bit. But uh, as long as he's looking at the ball, the, the uh, referees seem to be much more lenient about pass interference now. Both guys are looking at it. They weren't hard to call it anymore. Well, no, no blood, no flag. Yeah, absolutely. And that seems to be the particular situation that time. With 11 and a half to go. King wants it all. Mustangs going after him here. And there is a collision by Ron Morris and Stephen Braggs. That's an interesting call. Yeah. <laughs> I guess people viewing the game know that there's a lot of emotion uh, between these two teams, and so I would say that maybe that explains why you go for the home run when you're up 34 to six with 11:29 to play. There the are a lot of reasons why these two schools have, or at least reportedly, some bad blood between them. You've read about those in the newspapers, I'm sure, as you look at it from the end zone. And the Mustangs savoring a 34 to 6 lead and trying to tack on more as Gary Hashaway gets yarded. So that'll set up a third and six ball about the 45. They need to gain to 39, 39 and a half for the Texas long run. Well, we mentioned about Texas's three road games in succession here next week. They'll get to go home and they'll host Texas Tech at 1 p.m. down at Memorial Stadium while the Mustangs go on the road to play Texas A&M. pretty much playing for pride right now, and that was Ed Cunningham. A freshman defensive lineman from Fritch who bats that one down and sets up the punt. There you see the big paw go up in the middle. And bats it right back in Don King's face for the incompletion. He's 6'8". Ed Fritch is 6'8", and weighs 260 pounds. You got another too tall there. No wonder they had a hard time getting it over his head. Metcalf at the 8. Toby Morris and Rudy Harmon down there to make the stop. 37-yard punt with an eight-yard return. They, Eric Metcalf made believers out of him, I think, in the first half and early in the third quarter, so they're giving him no room now. All right, let's run down the schedule, Bill, for next week. The SMU at Texas A&M game will be the big game in the Southwest Conference next week as the Mustangs and Aggies battle. We headed into November, and the race will be decided. Texas Tech at Texas at 1 o'clock, as we said. Arkansas at Rice is a 2 p.m. game. Houston at TCU is a 2 p.m. game. And the Baylor Bears get a week off to get ready for that stretch run as they try to pull off another miracle and head to the Cotton Bowl. 5-0 the Bears now, right? After they went over TCU? 5-0, and, oh, and they head down that three-game stretch with a week off to get ready for it. This day will be 3-1 and one against league teams. Texas will be 2-1. and one. And the Longhorns continue their aerial assault. But it's not exactly an assault. It's more like desperation right now, trying to put some points up. 10-20 and counting here. And a second down and seven. I am surprised at how poorly Houston has played this year. We saw them last week, saw SMU do a number on them. They got bounced around pretty good by Arkansas today, too. Beat by, what, 30 points this afternoon, right? I think it wound up being a little closer than that, but they were down by 30 at one time. Another sack, Joe Phillips doing a number on Stafford, and another fumble. Four fumbles, two interceptions. Jerry Ball covers it for the Mustangs at the 21-yard line. I wish somebody had kept count of how many times the Mustangs have been able to play their fight song this afternoon. They may be setting a new SMU record. Yeah, we got a soundtrack here. It's over and over. There the ball pops out. Right place, right time on that fumble recover. That's a perfect example of what's happened for SMU all day. Whenever the ball hits the ground on a fumble, it bounces right into a Mustang's arms. Six turnovers now. Four fumbles, two pass interceptions, and here's Bobby Waters. The sophomore quarterback out of Garland. They had a flag and a whistle before they got going. Waters is from Lakeview Central High School in Garland. Only a sophomore, as we told you. Mustang scored 56 points against TCU. 37 last week against Houston. 34 so far today. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. First down. Cost 
hosting SMU five yards, make it first and 15 with 9.49 to play here in the fourth quarter. Waters the quarterback, David Adamson in the game along with Elmer Thomas out of Dallas Carter. Running back is Kobe Morrison, the fullback. Behind the blocking of Quinstein, not much available to him. So here is a second down and 12. Ed Cunningham, the big kid, the big 6'8 kid there to make the stop for the Longhorns. This is good experience for Bobby Waters to get a chance to get into the ball game and play with some of the first team people that he will be leading at quarterback next year. He's the future quarterback for the Mustangs, and it's not often you get a chance to play him with the other first team guys. Dupart still in at a tailback, and Ron Morris, the bottom of your screen and a wide out. Dupart picking his way forward to the 20. So here's the third down. And I would caution you not to forget Ron Morris, who has a, a great deal this afternoon as a wide receiver. Dupart now unofficially 74 yards, 22 carries. He, by the way, needed only 60 coming into the game today to catch former Texas Longhorn Chris Gilbert and move into eighth place in the Southwest Conference all-time rushing list, and he has done that. Waters under pressure, back over to Kobe Morrison. Same play they ran earlier to Albert Reese. This time he overthrows Morrison, who just sneaks out of the backfield, and that was well set up, but Waters just overthrew it. Yeah, very, very well set up. They had the play there just an inch away from having it. Dupart getting into some elite company as we prepare for a field goal attempt here by Brandy Brownlee. Uh, again, as we said, he has now become the eighth leading rusher in Southwest Conference history, passing Chris Gilbert, a great player for the University of Texas. Here is a 36-yard field goal attempt from Brownlee. Kick on the way. Is it good? Looks to be. Mustang crowd tells you it is, and it is good. A 36-yard effort by Brandy Brownlee. So tack off three more. 37-6, SMU leading Texas. 8.22 to go in a game that has been decided for a while. Over the middle, here's Metcalf from Stout. Bridging 45 yards of pass reception. The only thing I could say, if I were coaching the Longhorns, I'd try to figure out as many ways as possible to get the ball in his hands. And it looks like Fred Akers is doing that. He's had him return kickoffs, return punts. He's thrown a pass. He carried it from the tailback position. He's caught a pass from the wideout. They're trying to get him in the game as often as they can. This is the year of the little man. You've got Metcalf, the kid at uh, Texas Tech, Thurman, who's only 5'3". That one we can run under most of the defenders. Here's a second and ten. Texas continuing to throw. Everett Gay underneath the zone coverage. Brought down by Andrew Livingston. Another Eastern Hills product. Same school that produced Atkins for SMU and Llewellyn. For the Texas Longhorns. It's another first down for the Texas team. As now Stafford, 8 of 16 for 111 yards passing. First downs to only 13 for SMU, but don't let that fool you. Mustangs haven't needed too many first downs when they've gotten the ball today. 37 to 6, they lead in the fourth quarter. Stafford throwing on just about every down, being pressured on just about every down. Gets rid of it, throws it into a field of blue shirts, almost picked off by Darrell Reese. I think it would have been picked off had not another SMU defender tipped it. Everybody's trying to get into the act. Yeah, they all want a piece of it. That, that tells it all right there, doesn't it? Look at Stafford's face. He's tried just about everything today, and nothing, absolutely nothing, has worked for the orange and white Longhorns. Well, I said to you before the game today, Bill, that I was surprised that the line on this game was like seven and a half points in favor of SMU. Here you see the replay. I wasn't surprised that SMU was favored, but I was surprised that they were favored by so much. That tells you what I know about it. Well, this guy... I am also. I picked SMU. Nothing like this. Metcalf again. Somehow he hangs on down to the 15. He had to catch up with that. Just raw speed got in there for a 26-yard game. When you look at his stats from today's game, you're going to know that he had a heck of a football game. He's got a lot of return yards, got some rushing yards, and now he has a lot of receiving yards. 67 yards receiving on three catches. Metcalf only four carries for 17 yards on the ground, but he had that 78-yard kickoff return. Had one long punt return. So he has been a jack of all trades. Running, receiving, returning kicks today for Texas. Dodge in trouble. 
Gets away from Jerry Ball. Now let's see what he does. Throws it for Russell Hayes, who has it and scores. Despite the pressure coverage down there. By SMU's number 24, Derek Reed, who appeared to perhaps even go over the back of Russell Hayes. I think he tripped over Hayes. He was trying to come around. He thought he had a chance to make the interception. It looked like he tried to come around Hayes. Let's see it on the replay. And he tripped over Hayes' feet, I think. What a great job Stafford does of avoiding the rush. He should have been sacked by Jerry Ball, gets out of it, and then lofts it toward the end zone and says, please. Oh, yeah, he came around trying to make the interception. He gambled, didn't get the interception, and Hayes gets the touchdown. And so much for all my research on the most lopsided wins in this series. That is the first Texas touchdown since the Rice game, the third game of the year for the Longhorns. First offensive Texas touchdown in two and a half, almost three ball games. And here's a two-point conversion for the Longhorns. Looks like they get it. Everett Gay as the Longhorns convert a two-point conversion. And that makes it 37 to 14. Somewhat more respectable, but not much. Well, it's still a, a one-sided football game. And again, it's, it's amazing to think back to the beginning of the second half of this game when the score was SMU 13, Texas 6, and Texas returned the second half opening kickoff, 78 yards, drove it down to the two-yard line, and were knocking at the door to tie this football game up early in the third quarter. Didn't make it on fourth down. Yes, they held SMU, SMU punted, Metcalf fumbles, the Mustangs march it in, and boom, all of a sudden, it's a one-sided football game. When you look back to that play, Kit Case, who has two interceptions today, was the guy who finished off that tackle on Metcalf on fourth and short after Daryl Reese, you don't want to forget him, number four, a senior free safety up to contain Eric Metcalf and drive him back to the inside and there was a there was case to stop it and after that like you said the roof just just fell in on Texas now, did, I, did case have a fumble recovery today as well as I'm not sure I think he's recovered a fumble and intercepted two passes I'm gonna double check on the fumble recovery he would have my vote you said it earlier for defensive player of the week in this league I don't see how they could go with anybody else but there's a lot of as you look at an onside kick that bounds around before the Mustangs appear to have it, Gabriel De La Garza, I think, had a hand on it. There's a Mustang down, finally picked up by David Adamson. As Albert Reese, that was Reese, I guess, who got the hand on it, the big tight end who was up in the air and just hammered as he came down. But he's okay as he trots off the field. Reese had a couple of very important catches in the first half of this game. One on a third down play, and there you see the scoring drive, six plays, 81 yards. Did it very quickly, a minute and 44 seconds, and then he had a big catch in the drive right before the half where SMU took the lead. All of this for SMU, despite the fact that Pleasant and Morris have been shut out today. Neither of their wideouts has caught a pass. Just notice that. Here's Jeff Atkins. Well, you look at the rushing totals, though, and you begin to see why they've been shut out. There you go. And, and what is, isn't that amazing? Look at that stat. 327 to 323 total yards. How misleading that statistic is. Yeah, definitely. When you look at it again, six turnovers and three missed. They had three fourth down in short yardage. I know that they missed two. They missed on two and they went ahead and kicked the field goal on the other. Kicked the field goal on the other. That sums it up pretty well. Second and seven, Bobby Waters, quarterback. Atkins running. before that carry give him one maybe two more 60 yards on the day before James McKinney runs him out of bounds 74 yards unofficially for Depart, 60 for Atkins these two guys combined for only 82 in the game last year down in Austin and we told you earlier the Longhorns have not given up double 100 yard games by another team's running back since 1971 and SMU's depart and Atkins had done that in five of the last seven games. They haven't had to go far today to score their touchdowns, though. Bobby Waters showing some nice moves there. Waters, as you said, Keith, is the guy who will apparently quarterback this football team next year. 
only run twice for two yards before this afternoon. And now Waters carrying for the first time today, so that's only his third carry of the season. He did throw a touchdown pass of 41 yards in the TCU game. He'll make that 46 yards to Reggie Dupart. So he did that to contribute to a score. And here is Reggie from Bobby Waters. Well, the great thing about this experience for him, too, is it's uh, coming against a pretty good football team and a team that, you know, is still playing hard. These guys are competitors at the University of Texas, and they're still out there banging away, trying to make something happen. So it's it's not throwaway experience. It's experience coming against a good team and a good defensive unit. And this is the kind of experience that will help him down the line. Now, there's some mass substitutions. So Walt Zartman ended a wide receiver a moment ago. He's out. Adamson and Elmer Thomas for 85 are in there. Ball is Kobe Morrison, left tackle, another flag down. Have seen more flags in the second half than the first. The big penalty of the first half was a pass interference against Texas. That set up an SMU touchdown pass to Reggie Dupart, an illegal procedure against the Mustangs. 5-0-6, and boy, the first half was quick when both teams were running a lot, but the second half, the fourth quarter, has really drug a bit because Texas having to throw so much and not even doing that very effectively. Yeah, it's taken about a week, I think, to play this fourth quarter. <laughs> Ten ball, ball start, offense, second down. Second and 11. Exactly five minutes to go in this football game. 37 to 14. Dupard with running room and Dupard, one man to beat. Reggie Dupard scores again for SMU. Wow. A 39-yard touchdown run by Reggie Dupard. Now explain to me why that happened. Well, I think it's late in the game, and it's again a game that uh, has gotten a little bit out of hand, and Dupart's got great natural ability. The line opened up a hole for him. He goes through it, and uh, not many people run him down from behind. Okay, Dupart with three touchdowns this afternoon. He had nine coming into the game, so he has 12 touchdowns for the year, has scored touchdowns in 12 straight ball games. Extra point from Brownlee is good, and it is now 44 to 14. Need, need I say more about, as you see Fred Akers with his hat off, probably about ready to scratch his head. What more can you say? Got one for you, Bill Coates. It's uh, SMU Texas Series trivia time. What do you think is the most points ever scored by an SMU team against the University of Texas? Do I win anything if I guess right? Well, I don't know. We'll see. Now, okay, I'll say uh, since it's 44 to 14, I'll say 42. 44 is the most, oh, and it okay. was scored by today. <laughs> okay. Trick question. Well, trick question. All right. The most points ever scored by an SMU team against the University of Texas is the 44 points that the Mustangs have put up on the board today. 117 yards rushing now for Reggie Dupard. After a five-play, 50-yard drive. And let's see. Dupard had... 677 yards coming into the game. He's approaching 800 yards for the season. 12 touchdowns, 11 by the run, and 800, or right at it, 800 yards rushing through six ball games with still just almost a half a season to go. Eric Metcalf tackled at the 10-yard line this time by Derek Reed. Mustangs obviously owning the emotional advantage now, and everything they do, the fans just love it. Actually, Bill, I'm a little late in bringing this to your attention because prior to the day, the most points ever scored by the Mustangs against the University of Texas was 31 points back in 1965 when the Mustangs won 31 to 14. So they didn't just nudge by that mark. They've uh, pretty much destroyed that high point mark. You've been into the record book uh -oh. since this one got out of hand. Really? I mean, you had to, you've had to go into the record book. I, I thought I, you were going to ask me a question. So <laughs> I'm going to get paid back for that <laughs> trivia. Deal. No, I was just saying that you've been going after the record book since this game got out of hand about the middle of the third quarter, and it's been necessary. There's an incomplete pass as Darren Norris 
looked up and saw a lot of big Mustangs coming at him, including Keith Brooks, the safety, who hasn't had to intercept a pass and return it for a touchdown like he did last year. Kit Case has done that for him, but Brooks has played a very nice game in the SMU secondary, as has his teammates. A lot of changes in the SMU defense as Russell Hayes, who caught a touchdown pass a moment ago, not able to catch up to this Stafford toss. Coverage by Andrew Livingston. Well, I'm going to provide some color here in a minute for you, Bill. I'm just trying to come up with color to provide in a 44 to 14 game. And they're going to have to go back and sling it down the field. One of the great things for people who are still here in the stands of this game about the score is the fact that they won't have as many traffic problems. Yeah, a lot of the Texas folks have left. The band is still here, but a lot of people left. Everybody except the SMU defense and Cornelius Dozier. What they're doing now, Keith, is just taking turns. They're in the huddle, and I guess somebody says, okay, Dozier, it's your turn to get the sack now. So here comes Cornelius Dozier, number 99, and Stafford, as quick as he is, not able to outrun Cornelius Dozier and nice round of applause by the Mustangs, Mustang fans for their defense. Fred Akers may have fueled the fires a bit this week earlier at his Monday press conference when he said this game shouldn't count in the Southwest Conference standings because the Mustangs are on probation. Bobby Collins, as usual, didn't have much to say about that, but talking to some of the SMU players, I think they took that personally, and that may have served some motivational use this afternoon. Whatever, it's been obvious since that one play that we talked about in the third quarter that there has been a 180-degree shift in, in momentum and attitude. Now, there are some SMU fans at home thinking to themselves, why hasn't he mentioned that this is Texas's most lopsided loss at such, a, such and such a time to any team? And the reason I haven't mentioned it is it hasn't been all that long ago that Texas was blown out by Iowa 55 to 17 in last year's Freedom Bowl. That's right. Well, the Mustangs go for 50. They've got plenty of time with three and a half to play, 44-14. starting to keep it on the ground. And I think they would be content at this point just to uh, rush for a couple of first downs, keep that clock running, and get it over with. SMU's record is just tremendous. 34-2 and two when at least one tailback gains 100 yards or more in DuPart, has 117 unofficially. They also are 34-0 and 0 when they're leading after the third quarter. And they'll make that 35 and 0 this afternoon. So a couple of stats that really tell you how SMU likes to play. They like to get a lead and, and use their muscle to keep pounding away at people. And that's somewhat what they've done this afternoon when you tack on the six turnovers, the four fumbles, and the two interceptions. But a telegraphic moment ago on SMU's win totals tied with how well their running game does. As Keith makes his way down to the field to talk with what I'm sure will be a very happy Bobby Collins. On third and one, Waters going for the first down appears to have it. So the sophomore from Garland engineers a first down. Number 15 for the Mustangs this afternoon. A 21 for the Longhorns who have unofficially 323 yards of total offense. 374 for the Mustangs. And on first down, here's SMU's Byron Collins. Yep, it's Byron Collins in the game. Byron wears number 20. He is a junior out of Texas City. Who we saw briefly last week is Daryl Terrell. Back into the ball game. Terrell, the 
returning kicks. Perhaps the guy you'll see next year as the other half of the Pony Express. There's Bill Jones, of course, of Canada, who also runs well. He's a freshman and not playing this year. They'll try to redshirt him. That's Terrell getting it down to the 30-yard line, a gain of first down yardage. As Daryl Terrell makes his best run of the season, Richard Peavy there to bring him down. We're talking about Terrell, number 28, as he and Byron Collins now alternated tailback by play. Terrell, a redshirt freshman from W.T. White. I called him a sophomore earlier, but only a redshirt freshman as you get an end zone look at his first down 10 for the Mustangs with less than a minute 20 to play here. And Jeff Martin, another SMU youngster, another redshirt freshman out of Euless Trinity, wearing number 39, playing fullback. Mustangs into wholesale substitutions here as the clock winds down under a minute to go. Told you Keith Samples will be visiting with Bobby Collins following today's game, which will wind up at least 44-14 SMU, and the Mustangs with only 45 seconds to go. Let Waters keep it with a flag down, seem content with their 30-point spread over the Longhorns here this afternoon. It's they stop play momentarily as Texas takes a timeout to stop the clock for some reason. Well, we get an indication on the penalty. Forty seconds to go. Tomorrow night at eight o'clock. Channel 21 returns to the golden age of comedy. Television's favorite foursome, Ralph, Alice, Norton, and Trixie, laugh along with the Honeymooners' anniversary celebration tomorrow night on KTXA Television. Spend out quite a bit here at Texas Stadium. They came expecting to see the continuation of a close rivalry between these two teams, and it hasn't worked out that way. The walk-off against Texas make it second down and three. Waters, number 11, the quarterback, and now he backs away from the line of scrimmage and wants to go talk it over with Bobby Collins. And a timeout apparently taken by the Longhorns, as I saw the official point their way. Look at Bobby Waters, a look at Bobby Collins. in a 44-14 game with only 40 seconds left to play. So SMU will travel down to Texas A&M next Saturday to play the Aggies, who are still very much in the Cotton Bowl chase despite their loss to Baylor last week, while Texas will host the struggling Texas Tech Red Raiders next Saturday down at Memorial Stadium. Here's the I formation. The running backs are Darrell Terrell, number 28, Jed Martin, 39. Here's Terrell, who's stood up by Richard Peavy enough for the first down, so third and short, and Mustangs, I'm sure, will be content to let this clock run as long as Texas wants it to. And now we're under 20 seconds to play. Perhaps time for one more go at it. Really won't be. Scoreboard clock says 13. 25 second clock says 14. Mustangs will not have to run a play unless they desire to do so. Five seconds to go. Bobby Waters will keep it himself. This will end the ball game and give SMU a very big and very convincing win this afternoon over the Texas Longhorns. 44 to 14 the final as Fred Akers and Bobby Collins meet in midfield to shake hands and, and after a tough game this afternoon, both of the blue-clad Mustangs and the orange and white Longhorns will and visit a moment as we prepare for Keith Samples, who's down on the floor with Bobby Collins. Thanks, Bill. We're down here with Coach Collins. And, Coach, I knew you felt pretty good when you went into the locker room at the end of the half, but you could have no way of knowing what was going to happen in the second half. Well, that's right. You know, and, and it, that's, that's the thing that you worry about in a game like this, where turnovers start coming, and they were coming in our favor, and, it, you know, our kids took advantage of them. And, you know, who would have thought?
thought this, but uh, you know we're mighty, we're mighty proud of, mighty pleased. You know, it's the fourth down play right at the start of the second half when Texas had the ball down on your goal line. We were a little surprised they tried to go wide on fourth and such short yardage. Were you surprised? Well, I, you know, you, you really never know exactly what their game plans are, and, and of course. We made a couple of fourth down stops that were really, really big as far as our, our football team, and that has much to do with the turnarounds and anything else. you got to be really happy with this football team. They lost a couple of games in a row, and everybody said, well, with the probation, they're going to hang it up and forget the season, and that hasn't been the case. Well, that's true, and, you know, and I think that, you know, you got to give our kids an awful lot of credit. You know, they, they've got an awful lot to them. They've got an awful lot of character, and, and uh, you know, we've just been proud of them all along. Even in defeat, they were working hard, and, uh, you know, we've, we've been very, very pleased with them. The Longhorns dropped to four and two. SMU gets three touchdowns from that man, number 21, Reggie Dupard, converts six turnovers, and win the football game over Texas, 44 to 14. Back here to wrap up the ball game today where the SMU Mustangs have had a terrific win over the University of Texas Longhorns, winning this game 44 to 14, the most points ever scored by a University of Texas team, I mean by an SMU team against a University of Texas team. And Bill, it was a pretty dominating second half for the Mustangs. Yeah, it really was. You look at those uh, statistics and the rushing totals just jump out at you. They what, triple, almost triple Texas in the rushing department. Longhorns get 213 yards passing to 91 for the Mustangs but most of that coming in the second half. I mean, they had to throw every time out. Look at those total yards, 408 for SMU after they had about that same number last week in their convincing win over the Houston Cougars, and they had the six turnovers today, four fumbles and two interceptions, and it all leads to a 44-14 to SMU win over the Texas Longhorns. SMU 4-2, so are the Texas Longhorns. For Keith